Oh, we got some mixed up screens here. Give me a second to fix this. Welcome to the uh, the weekly Werewolf the Forsaken stream for our Chronicle Very Angry Dogs. I'm just going to be switching these cameras around quick. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to throw it over to Chris while I do that so that he can give you guys the... Um, a quick review of what happened last week. Chris, why don't you take it away? Okay, hello. Yes, we're back for session seven of Very Angry Dog, session seven of story one, The Hunt. Um, last time, the pack m managed to convince the hundred court of spirits that they were not the Kestrel's children, um, largely by, well, a certain amount rang from the court and the eventual pointing out that one of the minor functionaries, the Reeve uh, of the area, a fear spirit, had in fact recognized them as not being that. And uh, and the threat to invoke the presence of the Colopexy, which apparently made everyone in the court not want to have this go on any longer, rather than deal with the horse-headed uh, tree guardian, the uh, orchard guardian. Um, <clears throat> there was some uh, aftermath of that. Uh, the party then went for their, their main event. They made their way through the um, through Gleesham's shadow. Uh, which was very much like you know going into a wild west frontier town when everyone's pulling down their blinds and peeking out of things waiting for something to kick off which it did when the party called out one of the Hrafnir. They ended up fighting um, a war spirit called Faceless Kill uh, which had some rather unpleasant capabilities um, but in a relatively short battle, it's a rank 3 spirit they, they took it apart, took it down defeated it in reasonably fair combat and uh, and tore apart much of its essence for their own but they did not permanently kill it they didn't destroy it for good they just discorporated it uh, for those who don't know spirits in world of the forsaken these beings of this other world and unless they uh, die without any essence the spiritual power that fuels them um, they will eventually reform so werewolves can kill them permanently obviously there are certain way there are um it's not always considered a very good form depending on what why you are hunting them and in this case, is a fairly forthright, fair fight. The the pack left their foe ultimately to re to recongeal, and uh, took what they wanted from the carcass, including victory itself, invoking the power of their totem, uh, who became their totem. The uh, the Corvus Invictus bound itself to you and the fire in your hearts, rendering you a war band forged together in the fires of adversity by a spirit that now has reclaimed its name. And the Hrafnir recognised you for your victory as well. Um, with that, the party, uh, the pack, announced their victory to the local spirit court from atop the Barrow Mound where they'd been judged. Had some chats with a few spirits along the way. And returned to the Gleesham Estate, to Kestrel House, to, um, well, to start work on the aftermath of what they were going to do next. You know, Stormbring had ideas for making a glass hawk to a uh, raven to replace the uh, kestrel uh, in the pride, the, that used to have pride of place over the doorway before it vanished. Um, there was a general sense of now we are, we've forged ourselves to do it. We are ready to move on to new and great things. Oh, we have just lost uh, Pete. Hopefully he will be back with us shortly. I'll carry on for now. Yeah, here he comes. Yeah, he's returned. Um, and... Um, and then, as the pack returned to the flesh, and they got their phone connection back again, uh, Johnny Galloway's phone flooded with text messages and voicemail from the pack's lone wolf-blooded uh, Mary, his cousin, who has also been inducted into the pack, much to her surprise, <laughs> uh, in a rather, you know, the, the same grisly thing happened to her as it did to you guys, apparently except she wasn't expecting it uh, and is in the flesh so where we left things off there was the pack had come through to the, the to the flesh um stormbring was starting to sort of gather the needed things to start work on what he's envisaged as this uh, this 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 um raven as part of the new sort of iconography of the pack you also have the staff now with the raven of wood atop it as well um the uh, corpus of victors is currently is off uh, surveying its 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 new nest but you're fairly sure it should be safe in the shadow in the mansion area itself. Um, and yeah, very, you know, your, your phone has been pinging with this stuff. You've got this message from Mary going, what the fucking fuck? <laughs> um, that is not the only thing that has arrived in um, Johnny's voicemail since uh, you were off gallivanting around in another world, hacking up otherworldly spirits. You've also got a message from Marcus Tongham of uh, of uh, Tongham Run and Seal, the lawyers who were overseeing the execution of your great aunt's will. 
Um, and he has basically said we need to get uh, we'd like to get in touch for moving the next steps forwards of the paperwork and things like that. Can I? Can you please ring me back and can you arrange a so we can arrange a meeting um, to uh, to move to for for the necessary things? Um, Stormbringer, are you, do you? Is is the mighty Stormbringer former rugby player and student? Is he um particularly? Does he have a mobile phone these days? Is he is he hooked into his social media? Um. He probably has one, he just doesn't use it. Okay. Um so well, those things where, like he checks every once in a blue moon, like, oh, hi, mom called. And yeah, then doesn't well, call her back because he forgets. When you you see I guess I'm gonna say just for a little bit of a bit, you know, you see Johnny going through stuff and you go, Oh, my phone, is it has it just got anything back? And there is a little thing on your, your social media feeds. Um a guy called Ben Grendel, who is one of your buddies from the rugby team days at Bournemouth Uni. Um, has just they popped in on Facebook saying like just been you know had basically just been hospitalised, um, but it looks like he's saying it's not too serious, um, and he's a picture of him this big beefy guy it's like grinning as his arm you know with a, like a really great like stitch thing up his arm, um, and you because you you when you were running through the barbed wire of the battlefield and you got rent and you felt it had cascaded down and right. the wound on you that is now pretty much sealed was up your foreleg roughly where your our former buddy Ben has this big old slice up his arm. Hmm. Um, now, he is the kind of guy you remember to go like, oh, I appear to have fallen through a, a glass window and got lacerated while well, incredibly drunk and got <laughs> lacerated with loads of cuts. You know, it's fine. You know, it's, it's just like, and quite happily grinning through it. Um, he doesn't seem too badly injured, at least. But uh, there's that, yes, that reminder of malevolent powers um, right. so what any immediate uh, things the pack are going to do you have one very upset wolf blooded who wants a fucking explanation of some sort and you have um, the lawyers obviously want to sort some stuff out with uh, with with Johnny um, so what time of night is it I'm assuming it's still night right mm, it's yes with the caveat that I think it's probably still fairly early you know you didn't wait till it was too late before you headed out you went fairly right. you know early in, in in the late day so um yeah, and given obviously the the this yeah i think it's mid-evening probably all right oh i figure mary's still probably gonna be awake waiting for me to get back to her the lawyers yep. are probably closed right now so mm -hmm. uh that's the thing for the morning um all right i'm gonna i'm gonna sigh loudly and i'm gonna the dial i'm gonna find mary's contact in my phone and dial it so um you know uh mary's um you know where she lives it's not actually that far away from here but obviously yes yeah, you would ring rather than you know go visit but i'm just gonna try and get that thing up myself where is it do, 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 do. i'm gonna argue that will fail um she lives in a um a place called um uh, kington magna which is basically a small village uh, not far north of um, of Gleesham. Um When you ring, you get a moment of it starting to ring through, and then you get static. Um, can I have a perception check, please? Um, it's wits plus composure plus <clears throat> one if because you're in human form, or if you are in Dalu on the phone, I think it might be plus two in Dalu. I can't remember. Uh, I would love that extra plus one on my perception, but I'm not going to metagame it that hard, so. Always I... answer the phones in dark. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that's going to be 6d10 for me. Yep. One success. Okay. You're listening, and the static resolves itself into something that isn't... It's not static... Although it is at the same time, but through the static, it's like a raucous crowing noise of the cawing of many crows and ravens is what the static is made up of. And then the number, you know, go beep, 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 as a kind of, you know, fail to ring through. That's concerning. As I, because uh, I, I doubt I had her in speaker, so mm. I do say it's concerning. Uh, what time was your last call to me? Like, the um, last message? About half an hour ago, probably, or 45 minutes, half an hour, given the time it took you to get back. 
I turn to the rest of the pack. Uh, I think there's something up with Mary. Mm. I tried calling her and went to static, and over the static, I heard crows and ravens. I don't know. I don't know. If maybe part of the packs, packs with um, the Kestrel's children involved her, and they were dissolved, or we pissed somebody off, and they came after her. Okay. Then I guess we need to get a move on. Yeah. Okay. So your plan is to basically. It's early evening. Or... Sorry. It's early evening. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to go to um, Kingdom Magna, um, obviously you still don't have a car. <laughs> Last one you had <laughs> end up in the river. Being wolves will really cross the ground pretty fast, and it is dark enough. You know, it's a cloudy day that you, again, you figure you can probably cross the landscape without too much trouble. You know, keep out the fields of cows, and you can probably get there without drawing too much attention in the flesh. Um, and even if they do, what they're going to think? They can think it's a bunch of farmers' dogs, right, or something like that, rather than a pack of wolves. Hopefully, um, you can try and get the bus over or something. But God knows what the bus timetable is like over here. You haven't really had any reason to check before. So, what's your preference for getting over there or trying to orchestrate some sort of contact? Thornbreaker like always bus. votes wolves. <laughs> yeah, uh, wolves. Okay. Wolves. Okay. So you. Um, you're going to race across the landscape there through the copses along the the the, the dells the the brooks the bubbling brooks small rivers and generally trying to keep off of the what main roads there are and, and away from the, the farmhouses and things uh, can i have uh, dex plus stealth rolls from everybody um remember if you're in wolf form i think it's plus two to your decks so it will be uh, yes. extra dice there God damn, one success. Seven dice for me. Oh. Three successes for me. One second, I'm just doing a little admin here with my computer. It went a little crazy. Ah. Uh. Three successes for me. Nice. Wow. Okay. You race across oh, the Oh, and the worm has turned. <laughs> Seriously, right? Guys, we're in trouble if I'm rolling one success and 90 10 <laughs> uh, the, the rain has stopped, and leaving it in the aftermath, it, with your wolf noses, the world has exploded into smells and sensation. Wet earth, the rich stink of the animals' cows, it's in particular in the pig farm you pass. Um, the smell, strong smell of the vegetation um, and and the uh, and the wind blowing more rain bound clouds your way. Oh, you cut out, Chris. Chris, you cut out. We appear to be having some technical difficulties this morning, everyone. Hello, can you hear there me? There we again? go. We're back. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with my uh, with my mic with this today, but. Um, Kington Magna is a very small village, little more than a hamlet. And like a lot of small hamlets and villages around here these days, it's not really so much some sort of tiny little rustic village. It's more um, some very nice old stone cottages and buildings along a main little street um, and some newer stuff where richer people have moved in and renovated some things. Um, you know, it, it, it's not so it's not run down or poor in any way. Quite the opposite. You'd have to spend quite a lot of money to buy a house here, probably. Um, Mary has a um, a flat in a an old house, small old house, also been chopped up inside into a few, into a couple of flats, and uh, in that kind of way of it, someone simply said, "Well, there's enough. There's two floors. We'll make it two flats." With very little regard for the actual interior of how it all connects together, and these buildings, uh, you know, they they've they've been old and they've been rebuilt, and the insides are all over the place. You have the address. Not easy to find. Not hard to find. Um, the hamlet is very quiet. You know, you see one car going past with headlights low as they're pulling into a, bit, uh, a house down the other side of the hamlet. Um, a few lights are on, but largely it's sleepy and silent, except that there is something very obviously wrong with the house that Mary has a little flat in. Um, it is covered in crows. 
it's not like a, an every inch bird, <clears throat> but roosting atop the house, there is a there is a whole you know a, a mur very much a murder of crows, shall we say? Many crows on the roof, more in the very small garden out the front of it, and and a number more in the um, the trees uh, the, in the hanging the branch of the trees, uh, perched the branch of the trees. They are not making a lot. The alarming thing is that they aren't making a lot of noise. There's the occasional rustle of four is one jostles another. Um, they're, they're, there is not they're not making a lot of noise there's the occasional rustle and caw but otherwise they're remarkably silent for a good hundred or so crows perched all over someone's property um, I'm going to peer across the gauntlet using in the shadow um, Kingdom Magna is um, it's an odd place because it's quite solid you know the shadow impressions of these places is very very intense these buildings have been here for a very very long time um, but they are more ramshackle, more run down than in often quite nicely renovated houses in the flesh. Um, it looms over the street a bit, the very narrow road that runs through it. The buildings sort of creak over, um, and a few more seem bone like, rib like sort of structures pulling themselves out. In the shadow, the building in question is um, in reasonably good health for the shadow. It doesn't look particularly warped or twisted other than it's oddly looming slightly. Um, the There are strange faces in the, in the glass. Um, occasional flickering lights within. There is, however, a um, a small number of what appear to be crows there. Nowhere near as many as are in the flesh. And these crows look Odd. They look slightly twisted and deformed, um, but there's about a dozen of them on the building, perched with their claws biting into its flesh and it's you know e oozing um, grey blood from the wounds as they they hook themselves in. Um, but that that's what you're seeing across the other side here. Is the unconquered Raven with us? Um, do you wish him to have, have be with you? Well, he can what he can ride. He can basically just hang around and. Twilight, right? He can with you, yeah. As long as he keeps close, it's it's. If he can go a field by himself, but it's a lot less pleasant for him. Um, so, as a pack decision, did we want to bring the unconquered raven with us? Yeah, probably. Okay. Well, he's in twilight with you there then. Um, to him, friends of yours, these spirits. They are not known to me. I'm going to walk up and knock on the door to her flat. Yeah. As you approach, obviously, presumably you find somewhere quiet to shift up into a human form. And uh, as you approach, the birds will turn their heads at one to look at you. And then, with a, a deafening rustle of the wings, the whole lot just take off um, and hurtle up. They don't come up and swirl or hang around, they just scatter in all directions. Um, and after they've gone away, it's as if they've return to being relatively normal birds and they're sort of purring off, grouping off and, and cascading away. In the shadow, you see the, the spirits there shuffle and they, they react to this, but they don't need to do anything further, you see. Uh, Stormbringer's door, you know, knock on the door, there's, well, um, there's a buzzer for the top floor flat, which is hers, you bring that. And um, you hear um, like a thump after you ring the bell and then a bit of quiet for about 30 seconds and then you hear sort of someone shuffling to the door quite quietly uh, and then the yank of the door coming open and the door sort of swings uh, inwards um, Mary is there wearing um, blood spattered clothes uh, you know, she looks like she, uh, it looks like she's coughed up a load of blood. So there's like a, an apron of, of of red down the front of what was previously quite a nice white office shirt. Um, wild haired, wild eyed, <laughs> with a cleaver in one hand. <laughs> oh no! Um, which isn't blooded or anything. It's just you know, uh, stare and uh, and looks like she's ready to to give someone the cleaver at high speed. <laughs> sees it's you, recognizes you well enough, and doesn't then sort of. You know, doesn't do anything stupid with it. Looks at you uh, like, uh, and is she's not quite. Hyped. She's breathing fast, but quite low. She's not like, <sighs> but you know, she's she's clearly in quite a heightened state of of, anxiety, of, of um, adrenaline. Um, right. Looks you up and down. Goes, 
You, what the fuck did you do? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna smile in one of those ways that I'm, I'm attempting to be reassuring, but <laughs> comes off as more off-putting. Yeah. Because that's Jack. Yeah. Um, I think we should talk inside. She looks past you, presumably sees the other two there. Looks and then looks around because the birds are gone. Like, okay, fine, fine, come on. So. A few minutes later, in the very small kitchen of the very small flat that Mary pays an exorbitant amount of rent to live in, um, the kettle is on. She, um, but while she made, she she asks you when you come, like, do you want something to drink? But then seems to completely forget about it after it's like is in no state to actually do anything particularly hospitality wise. Going into the flat, basically, it looks like the front of her sofa is splashed with blood. Um, <laughs> She looks like she was sitting down watching the telly, which is still quietly buzzing away on mute, um, when a, a raven tore its way out of her. Um, and the, there is the window was... Um, the window looks like it was... It's an old sort of pull-down window. It looks like it was open. And she tried to pull it down, and it's jammed partway down, and she couldn't get it closed. Um, oh, there's a bit of disarray around there where she was, you know, stuff knocked over. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> She, uh, there's a bit of blood in the bathroom where she was starting to try and clean herself off, but she hadn't quite. She was obviously, you know, not quite thinking in a straight line and getting things done. Um, she she settles down by the table, staring at you, and then frowns and goes, "You all stink of something. It's not." I'm gonna go. But I, I think I'm gonna walk like right after to the window, <laughs> mm -hmm. Chris, and I'm gonna. Fix it and close it. Yeah. For so after you put you just around, you have to put a bit of brute force to get it out of how she's jammed it. But you know, let's face it, Stormbringer is pretty well built, so that's not. Too hard. And then you get it down. As you're doing so, you can see um, there is the fading ephemera of a couple, a few uh, raven feathers around there. And think first, you think it's a raven feather. Makes sense. There were tons of crows. When you pick it up, it's spirit ephemera. It's it's literally fading away. It's bubbling, uh, okay. effervescing into nothing. Um put it down. She jumps when it goes down. So you've just come back from where the fuck you were. You all stink of duff. What the fuck? And weird shit was... I start... Look, I was watching the news and they were talking about some war somewhere and I start suddenly getting flashbacks or I get a sense of like it became awfully fucking real for a moment. I thought, uh, uh. and then when that had passed, I sit, I make myself a cup of tea to calm down, and then I cough up fucking bird. It fucking hurt. <laughs> Thornbreaker, yeah, it, Thornbreaker it, it, is going to go over to the the stove and put on a, a kettle to make some tea for her. And then. There's, it feels like I've got bad, like my heart's on fire, not just because a fucking bird came out of my chest, but I can sense you fuckers somehow. I'm going to look at uh, Johnny. Yeah. I'm going to sniff the air, see if I can kind of sense out where she keeps the liquor cabinet. And uh, uh, look at it and say, she's your cousin. I was going <laughs> to hand up a, a, a bottle of whiskey to add to that tea. The Corvus Invictus <laughs> has settled... Um, on the basically on the back of the chair next to her, she can't see it because it's in twilight, and she doesn't. She has the um, her wolf blooded tells she has enhanced physical senses of the werewolf, but she doesn't have the spirit senses, so she can't see it. Okay. Yeah, you find the liquor cabinet is. Um, you open it, and at first you're like, "There's a few bottles that aren't full very much." You're a bit disappointed. Then you get to the section that appears to be the rum, and it seems Mary's quite keen on rum-based cocktails because there is quite a lot of rum. So, um, I know you know a little about what we are, werewolves and the whole lot of that. Yeah, you don't need to sound embarrassed when you say the fucking word, okay? <laughs> her usual calm, like, I want everyone to not be hurt, her werewolfing and killing everything has gone out the window because she's, you know, this is not her evil. Um, what, what role would I need to make to sort of have a, re you know how some people have that reassuring, confident calm presence. I'm assuming that would be presence. Would that be um, persuasion, or what would that be? Empathy? I, I think persuasion in this situation. Cause, um... Okay. So, so why, why do you make that roll? Four dice. 
Get it not tied. <laughs> You're right. I think we broke that curse. We broke that curse. That's fine. Yeah. One success. Okay. So he so comes you're... over with a cup of tea for her. Yeah. You're trying well, to do that. I'm going to get the items to make her a hot toddy and take the tea okay. from, uh, from Thornbreaker and tap into that rugby drinkology knowledge. And, and, and you two doing drink. that, that sense of you guys bustling around like you're... You know, firstly, you know, people doing stuff her, but also the sense you guys busting around in a in a vague approximation of domestic normalcy is chilling, calming her down a bit. You know, there are people here; they're doing stuff in the kitchen like you would do. Yes, they're making alcoholic drinks, but hey, you know, um, and she's slightly chilling out and not being quite so like het the fuck up, mm. like she's expecting something bad to happen at any second. <laughs> so <clears throat> we operate in hunting packs and part of the duty of a pack is to establish what we call a totem spirit and today we finally did that the reason you got involved is I guess it leveraged our familial family connection and assumed you were a member of our pack um, when you say that and again she can't hear this but um uh, the Unconquered Raven sa says she is a legate. Um, she looks at you. We said that. Did I get a say in what? I how did you? <sighs> All right. So you're saying the bit where a bird tore its way out my chest and flew out the window, taking a whole load of presumably what I've been trying to have for dinner with it, was because I'm part of this pack. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you warn me? Honestly, I didn't think that connection was going to get leveraged, and I wasn't expecting it. Um. So, because the Unconquered Raven has said that I speak for it, um, yep. <clears throat> he, um, Thornbreaker clears his throat and says, uh, the totem says that you are a legate. She looks nonplussed. Obviously, recognizes the word in general, but doesn't see any meaning to it in it, particular. It basically, it means you've been deputized by the totem. Do I get a say in this? No. <laughs> so, so Jack, it, while they're talking, because you know Jack is not much of a social guy, yeah. um, using that again, tapping into that vast rugby knowledge mm -hmm. uh, and collecting uh, some dish dish detergent and whatnot to clean the couch to get the blood out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She, when you've put the hot toddy, she starts, she sips the, the, the alcoholic beverage you've put in front of her gratefully um, and looks slightly surprised when you start cleaning the blood up um, but doesn't say anything. <sighs> Look. This is like someone has, it's like someone's shoved a bunch of pepper. I, I can smell you fuckers normally and, and other weird shit, right? This is like someone's sensitized my sinuses by making me snort a load of pepper it's fire in my chest and in my oh I can't fucking turn it off duh look Mary I know this isn't fair and you have every right to be upset but the reality is you were always in danger for the sheer fact that you could sense our kind for the sheer fact that there's something in your blood that makes you different than the people around you, and the spirits will take notice of you. However, because you're part of our pack, officially now, you have certain benefits you didn't have going for you before. One, yes, you're Johnny's cousin. So, we cared about you on some level because you were Johnny's cousin. But now, we're all family. Which means you now have three werewolves with a vested interest in keeping you alive which is a good thing and number two you now have the benefit of a spirit patron of sorts and you will find that when we ask you for the little favors we occasionally ask you for that you're a believer in karmic luck she looks at you, looks down at a bloodstained shirt, looks up and goes, if I was a believer in karmic luck, I believe I've been a pretty fucking bad person for it right now. You, you'd believe it, but 
there's balance, right? Because of this pain you've had to endure, I think you'll find that moving forward when you try to assist us in certain affairs, things will break your way a little more frequently. Oh, fucking great. So my benefit is I get to help you out more, you bastards. <laughs> I mean, if we help you out, it also benefits us. It, it's a two-way street. That being said, I, um, uh, there's lots of room in Kestrel Hall, and you could live there rent-free. Well, I kind of like living here, apart from the she points that apparently all the crows now think this is the best fucking nightclub in town uh, um, I mean seriously you think there's, there's... the rent here is pretty expensive um, that's that's a big thing I'll, I'll need to think about that right you're telling me so far I've been plugged into some kind of I've generally <clears throat> tried to stay away from all the occult bullshit right because you know you aren't the only one who I've met, as you know, and, and, and generally I've tried to keep myself on the edge so that they don't get me killed, for example, in stupid ways. But I thought, hey, you're my cousin, I'll help you out, you're new here. What could possibly go wrong? Jesus Christ. Um, look, um... Are any more birds about to come exploding out of my chest tonight? Not that we know of. I look up from the couch. That's that's <laughs> right. and thank thank you by the way for that. I mean, oh, what am I going to tell you? Um, she's, she's saying obviously because you're scrubbing the couch as clean as you can get it. Um, okay. Um, oh, I'm tired and is it all right? Look, I I really need a good sleep. If I can sleep, the buzzing, Ugh. Mm. but I need to sleep. It just smells not good. I mean, that's, this place doesn't smell good anymore anyway. Man, he's move out. Uh, look, I, I I, need to get my thoughts. I'm sorry. My thoughts aren't together. I'm not very with it. I'm really sorry I haven't been a good host to you and stuff. Um, I'm sorry for swearing at you. Um, I think I need to have a bath, figure out if I've got any clean shirts for tomorrow's work, and then just think what, the, and think about what the hell's just happened. I... Okay. Okay. Is that is that okay? Fine. Fine. Okay. This isn't really how I expect things to go. <sighs> okay. Well, look. Uh... It's it's it's. Thank you very much for coming over and seeing me. Um, you probably shouldn't stay here for too long if you've parked up. Some of the no neighbors around here aren't very, you know, they're a bit nosy about people parking where they shouldn't and getting on your case we and want. stuff. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Of course. Sorry. Of course. I. I, I don't have to be a to be reassuring smile that comes out a little awkward. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's the I am reassuring you with a smile about saying that we turn into wolves and go places. And she's like, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Mm. Right. Well, look, you you got you guys are better to get out of here and get back to your place before anything else goes wrong. Um, thank you for coming over and seeing me. No problem. Anytime. So, departing and glancing the shadow, the the crow spirits are no longer there. They appear to have departed as well, along with the physical spirits. So, clean and easy journey back. It's, you know, it's a bit. It's gotten darker now. There's a faint drizzle, also helping mask your sense. Um, so, unless um, you want to do anything else, there's a clean trip back to the, the mansion with no problems. My only thought was, do we? I think there's a need to kind of hang around her place with those crows. Like, those crows are bugging me. I'm not going to hang yeah. around, but I'm going to urinate along the foundation of the house to mark it. <laughs> what? We're okay. predators. You smell predator, you move you on. Right. So I urinate around the foundation of the house okay. and I move on. Yep. Uh, it's most effective, ironically, as a wolf when you have the appropriate scent glands and things. So you, yeah. go and you, mark, you mark the house. Um, the raven... Um, perched on the fence at the front of the garden. If you wish a watchman to keep vigil over her, I will. I can remain until sun here till sunrise. 
if that will set your mind at ease, Stormbringer. It would. Then yeah, I will watch. The totem doesn't need to be physically present for the hunting grounds, right? I just need to invoke its symbology through it. Right. Yeah. Right. Correct. Then it's fine. Cause... Better that I guard, but I guard one of our own tonight. If there, if you feel there is danger, there might be. Um, she lives north of us, right? North uh, east, yeah. So that's closer towards pure territory. So yeah, definitely, especially pure and forsaken territories. Yeah. So yeah. You didn't so, smell any sense other around the village other than hers, but yeah, sorry. We what have, you we have, we have um, a little, a little visitor little at the moment. Unsure. So I can hear over the sound of the small person. She wants to show everyone her rainbow shirt. Stand up. A rainbow uh, shirt? Wow. We uh, are. Ah, like that shirt, Cassie. Nice. And, and of cool course, that's up with the cool yep. mom shirt. And the cool mom. Yes. little humble brag in the background. Want to wave to everybody? All right, you gonna go play with mommy? Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go in the backyard, right? Enjoy the backyard. Oh, we just looked at Aunt Katie. Nice. Aunt Katie called. Great. Okay. So, Keith, sorry, what were you saying? Um. So, one thing I'm not a hundred percent sure because I've never been the the spirit guy in any game that we play. Um. Do we have like a, a almost like a psychic connection with the Unconquered Raven that he can send us messages from here and let us know that we're needed? Or he can't do that inherently. There are okay. a couple of ways to get it via gifts like the the pack. Uh, you, want, you, uh, you cut out there. Sorry, there are ways to okay. get that, but in this case, he does not have a telepathic. You have a sense of him. And if that okay. if he gets taken I uh, taken out, for example, you will feel the pack bond. It won't cut unless he's completely destroyed, but you will feel it go as he gets splattered. Um okay. that doesn't mean that he doesn't have any means of contacting you at range, but they are okay. likely to be um a bit weirder than just a sort of a mental message. Right, like a raven may show up and start calling at us. Something like that is likely to happen, yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright, cool. So uh let's head back and beat the bows. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, the yeah. Doing it. So I go to what you call it. So it is late, very late now, back at the mansion. Um, you know, and here one thing to note is here in this part of Dorset. Dorset is far from uninhabited, but you are away from the town, and it's light pollution. You know, it's very dark here at night when the clouds are over the moon. You know, it is. Um, if it were a clear sky, you'd have a very good view of the stars here. As it is. With the mansion mostly silent and dark, because you you haven't really been, you know, most of it's just empty. Um, there's a few, you can see a twinkle of lights through the trees down where the stable is, but otherwise this place is, is quiet apart from whatever lights you make and put on. So, hunting ground territory, uh, right to be done. Yes, um, I knew, like I know it taught me the strength in the cult version, but I kind of want to play to mm -hmm. my strengths on this one. In Absolutely, you do the version. It, it taught you thing. You take the 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 symbols and you reinterpret it as you see fit. Right. So, I uh, I kind of want to make it like almost like a dexterity stealth or a wit stealth type of thing. Mm -hmm. Either that, like symbolically, there's always somebody watching you around. Okay. The territory. You territory. can have either of those, and both those work as in terms of the. I suppose the right would be. Hey, you cut and, out. Sorry, the, the, I suppose the right would be that you are trying to creep around the territory you want to mark, as without you know you are such a master of this land that the the beings of it don't even notice your passing, kind of a, the, the silent passing of the the lord and dominion of this place. That um, or like there's somebody always watching you, so yeah. like it, from the shadows. That's why I said wits or stealth. Wits for the perception aspect. If, or, yeah, if you want to do wits, then then in the case it's, it's almost spying on your territory. In that case, yes. Yeah. Um, to, now, there, <laughs> so let's have a look at the uh, at the the right itself. So we've got um, we've got a, the symbols. You've got the usual set of things to draw on for the pluses. There's a couple of other things to, to talk about with it as well. Um, in terms of the the performance of it, but we'll get to that once you figure out your the performance itself. That's some, there's something to do with the effects I want to cover. I guess, uh, like, to represent the the pack totem, the pack ourselves, it's like, um, like, I'll be 
carving sigils in key locations that are hidden around the territory. Mm -hmm. And are you marking um, the Corvus Invictus, the sort of the Aquila Raven yeah, as well to say? Exactly. Okay. Around locations of the territory. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm going to turn that into a dexterity stealth roll. Um, okay. I just want to... And because it's stealth, is that enough to invoke my tribe? In terms of the... Uh, uh... Let's have a look. So, um, hmm. your auspice moon isn't in the sky. This is unfortunately. Right. Is your tribe symbolically represented? Hunters in darkness. Uh, if you're, I suppose you're performing this right and creeping around to watch a... I will allow that for the tribe bonus, yeah? Okay. Are you going to be in Dali form? Yes. Okay, so plus one from that. Um, all participants are wearing or showing symbols that indicate their shared purpose. Um, yeah, we can, like, I can carve the, uh, well, mark the sigils of the pack and the territory around my yep. pack mates. What, what are you marking them on with? Blood, ash, mud, something else? Oh, Jack's gonna carve it in blood on his chest. Blood. The wound itself will heal, but the blood will stay. Uh, but, um, Sorry, Karen. Since I'm the right master, I'm gonna use my blood for it, though. Okay. Alright, fine. Use your blood, then. <laughs> it's fine! You're it's creepy. Not like a limited amount to go around, you know. Everyone You're creepy. <laughs> and is a pack I don't want your blood on you. It packs to the right blood. in a man that draws a symbolic amount. If you are using the, because it is a banner, the pack right. is lit, totem is literally a banner. If you are marking it with the, the the image of the banner, I will allow that for you. Are using the totem involved as well. Yeah, so that's plus one from that. Now, the important question is, what are you marking as your territory? Now, the existing territory that um that well, I'm Stormbring is linked to, is is about five miles across ish, I guess, in total, and a bit okay. more than that, maybe six miles across, and it covers obviously the estate and a swathe of uh, farmland and hills, low hills and, and river around it, including most of Gleesh, the town of Gleesham. Um, now we're going to talk at some point. We're going to go. I've got a little more details about territory we can go into the future, but there's a to the Gleesham is to the basically to the north, to the south. There's a uh, a small village um, called. Uh, Corndall Magna, which is not in the territory as it is, and obviously their territory ha the territory has the big bite out of it in the orchard area, which is where the Predator Kings were apparently take had their territory. Right. So, are you going to match the old territory boundaries as taken by the Kestrel's children at the time that the the old wolf last did it, or are you going to do anything funky, reduce it, expand it, anything like that? Um. I'm kind of a fan of taking what was there previously. We might just need to establish a new deal with the Hundred Court then if we do that. Because I'm assuming our territory is in, like, will overlap that portion. So we're going to have to figure out some sort of a deal like they had earlier. The Hundred Court appears to be a, 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 a spirit, sort of a local spirit organization. You're not sure what the boundaries of its influence are, but it implies ah, okay. a larger structure. So the chances are it's not going to be a case of it specifically with your territory and even then the first step as werewolves probably to any any god awful bullshit spirit legal shenanigans is going to be having the hunting right up and running as your thing because otherwise it'll yeah. be like but you haven't claimed this place and territory what are you yeah. talking about you know so yeah um yeah i i guess basically what the old territory was are you guys in agreement is there anything extra yeah. you want to pick up okay and that's something we can go over in a bit is sort of the implications of what you've claimed so but, uh, one, two, three, and then uh, we can try to hunt down if there's a locus in uh, Gleesham. Okay, you have f plus four dice from the factors. There's no penalties um, because you are not performing the right and territory because you're not trying to claim someone else's territory with underground as well. Because you're doing, but then you don't take any penalties. So yeah, it's uh, it's time to invoke begin the right. And I assume the other guys are coming with you on this silent yes. jaunt around. You are being the ultimate stalking predators of the night. You know, that's. Uh, I guess. Uh, Go on, sorry. Let's let's see if you frighten any rabbits along the way, or if you pass unseen. <clears throat> All right, eleven d ten. Nice. Four successes. Okay. Boom! Hour and an exceptional success on the second row. So, what? How many did you get? I got six on the second row. Okay, that's it complete. So, um. It takes you. Uh, it should really take you more than an hour, in fact, to do this, even assuming. But it would the right itself is only an hour of work. 
Um, so you have gained the, um, the symbolic focus condition, much like uh, Stormbring has had before. Uh, this time you've got it. Um, you get exceptional on three successes rather than five on the interactions with spirits, and your effective spirit rank is increased by one. Fire. Um, so you perform the right, and as you slink through the darkness, there's a strange sense. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to move quietly around in, in the absolute dark. There's a sense, even as werewolves, with the intense senses you have of, of, of depri sensory deprivation. The dark and the quiet and the movement. Things focus down, they almost tunnel vision to the quiet movement from one place to the next on your journey. Um, the world becomes small. Yes, it's still intense in sensations that your wolf senses are passing and interpreting for you. The passing of rabbits sleeping in their burrows. The quiet noises in the trees as an owl swoops down and takes a kill from a mouse in the field. Um, the patter of rain the gurgling of the brook, but it's for you, your purpose here narrows down to the needle pinprick point of the rite you are performing. And in a way, that solipsist view perhaps insulates you from the world. It is as if so internally concentrated are you on your task that the world itself does not see you pass. No animal stirs even when you are a few feet away from a small deer in the woods. It does not raise its head from its grazing. Nothing matches, no, nothing marks your trace, the traces of your passing. And when you return to the beginning point, to the Kestrel Hall itself, and the rite completes, you feel like your feather like touch upon this place has nonetheless, be, is nonetheless exerted a grip of steel. You have passed through this place and have shown yourselves its masters. Your dominion, a presence they do not even know, is there. But it is anchored deep nonetheless you're all now under the hunting ground right plus two to empathy politics and animal ken roles relating to the denizens and plus two to foot chases either um tracking either getting away or following stormbringer you feel the odd wrenching sense it's like a physical wrenching as the right ends of the old right you were attached to not simply being freed from you because it's not it's not there anymore you have been pulled away but you feel it pull free it simply collapses um an old right performed by a dead wolf for no one now it unravels uh, it is gone um, it takes your breath away as it does so and leads for a moment a sort of a chalky taste on your wolf's tongue and it is then replaced by the sense now of this new power settling in and for the other two the hunting ground right feels right. It feels like you are the masters of this place. It feels like you should be the master place. This is yours to defend now. For Stormbringer, it is that. But the best thing I can describe is it is like having a, you know, it, it is refreshing. The okay. old right now, you feel the old right now was almost oppressive. It was old. It was heavy with a history you didn't really understand that had been right. hijacked and thrust onto you, even though it wasn't yours. This new right feels like yours, and it is, it's like a whole body sort of whew, cleanse of something that you didn't realize was perhaps weighing you down a little. Okay. The pack now rules its territory. You have claimed this as your, as your, as your own. Anything else before you hit the hay? I was like, Jack is going to, to let out a, a sigh of relief with the new refreshing, like this is ours. Mm. Um... Based on the time, does it make sense for us to try to get the additional glory renown we talked about tonight, or is that something we should you put could, off till tomorrow? You, uh, it's it's actually an okay thing to follow on for because you've just laid claim to what is yours. I mean, you're yeah. you're tired. You've been in a fight. Some of you are still got <clears> lingering injuries that of you know. I think most of the lethal damage, all the lethal damage, was cleared by now. But I know some of you are a little bit ag that's still gnawing at you. Yeah. Um. That said, it is the tired. Um, it is the tired uh, fatigue of victors. You today, you won. You didn't just win. Everyone knows you won, and you claimed your prize. And everyone knows you claim it. it's. A, it's a big. You know, you've walked away from this, going, "We're fucking awesome," and everyone knows it. Now, the whole thing with your wolf-blooded, you know, heart, half chest exploding and all that, maybe have unsettled you a little bit. But now you've gone and you on the back of your victory, you've now laid claim to what should have always been yours, almost. Yeah, I, I feel like now is as good of a time as any to do it. Yeah. Um, all right, so in that case, uh, we're going to use the uh, the locust to head into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I'm going to howl. I'm actually going to cash in my inspired condition from Song in Your Heart. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. So it's going to be one, two, three, five. <sighs> No successes. Oh, yep. um, all right, so he howls to try to get the attention uh, of a... Oh, would I get a bonus die for the Gibbous Moon in the Sky, or no? Um, No, because you're, okay. you're trying to do a thing where you can do it already. Because um, you, if you cashed an inspired condition, then remember you get a willpower point back as well, even sure. if you didn't succeed. Gotcha. Um, so you howl in a hope to go, you know, attract something awesome and nothing much happens. Now, you are in luck, however. Um, while, on the one hand, you haven't managed to therefore impress a spirit and made them go up and go, yeah, you're awesome. Um, perhaps your deeds today have already drawn attention, shall we say. The You enter the shadow, the twisted, overgrown, gnarled, not very welcoming shadow of your home, your lair, even though at least it is your lair and it's safe. And um, the, the moon is occasionally breaking through the full many clouds above, and you're getting um, sweeps of moonlight across as the crowd, clouds pass overhead. The cow is howls. It's a night nice enough howl, but you feel like maybe it doesn't really carry through the full sense of triumph you all feel today. It's just a howl, really. He, yeah, he needs to put you back in it a bit more, maybe. But while you are waiting and hoping to see if something would respond, it doesn't. as your heart sinks a little bit because you, your howl hasn't drawn something down, the sweep of moonlight of the latest cloud passes over the, the rugged hand-like lawn ahead of you in the house. And instead of simply passing away, the moonlight bold, simply curves up and, and unfolds like, like flower, or like petals or feathers. The caolith that appears, um, half of it is a sort of glowing, fulsome, bloated shine. You can really, can't really see that half of it. On the other half, the details emerge into a thing of spinning there's eyes um there is spinning shapes of perhaps feathers it's hard to see it's very abstract um that doesn't quite bulge out doesn't quite form the other half of it and in a halo around it is a cascade of what looks like maybe smaller spirits rather heron like thing which you glint and come apart in shimmers of moonlight the thing emerges up, basically, out of this, folds in on itself, expands, and, and the, the abstract image for you looks, well, maybe it's got a lot of eyes, it's certainly looking at you, uh, and says in a, in a rather sing-song voice, We have seen what you have done. We have watched your victory. Now you to find and see what say you of your deeds. Your voice thus far has not impressed, though your claws have matched what foes you test. But now speak to us of your victory. Tell us what you have gleaned. Uh, I didn't cut out there, did I? No, 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 no. you got it. It was, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. I loved it. Um, Thornbreak was just thinking of what to say. Yeah. How, how to phrase that? I'm. I'm drawing a blank here and I'm ashamed of myself for doing so. It's this um give me one moment. I will come through with it. This just just do it in, in song. <laughs> I have to sing back to them. <laughs> <laughs> um You must sing Why can't I remember it's it's on the tip of my tongue. Basically like this tale is true. What the hell do they say? 
the story is true. The story is true. That's what I. Yeah, that's what I thought it was gonna be. All right, cool. So, um, and, uh, in person, cutting out a little bit. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Um. So. Uh, I'll let it can you hear me now? Yes, yes. we can. Yeah. Um, so Thornbreaker steps up and, and starts in first tongue. This story is true. We warriors three journeyed from across the sea to sing the glory of Urfara who came before us and our brothers and sisters. We ventured into the glass nest to challenge the great spirits of war that dwelt within. We planted the banner of the unconquered raven. We forged bonds of brotherhood. And against a powerful foe, we felled him. Though his reach was far, the faceless kill could not stand against our teeth and claws. He got choked up. He could well, It was. It was yeah, emotional. It was beautiful. And... <laughs> I'm not quite sure why the the mic's doing this. Uh, I'll have to test that. <coughs> can Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. It's um. It listens to what you say. Can you please give me a presence plus expression, probably expression or persuasion, but expression. Remember that you can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. If you want to spend the essence, you can activate Voice of Glory for some bonus dice as well. Sure. I will do that. That is one point of essence. Yep, one point adds your glory in dice. Yeah. Alright, so that's going to be five, six, seven. And dice. improves its impression of you by one step, but that's sort of by the side. Nothing. Damn it. Nothing. Okay. It ponders what you've said. Words flow like the rivers. They come slow, they come fast. Calmness can mask ferocity. Depth lies unseen. Your words are yet a brook, a stream, not yet a roaring current. Young wolf, work hard upon your words, lest they be too, lest they be abhorrent. Listen to us, listen to our chorus, learn from us, take strength from us. You need it, young one, you need it yet. May your voice be stronger in the days to come, for as yet it has not done what you seek to achieve. You are weak yet, but before we leave we will make you stronger. You hear now many voices echoing from it, a rising chorus. For the other two it is, it is that there is a strange unearthly ululation. Almost angelic, but rather too sinister to quite manage that. <laughs> However, as it pitches up, um, Thornbreaker feels his body literally shuddering and shivering in resonance with this. It is not pleasant at all. It is as if you are at ground centre of an earthquake going off with these this thing rising to a shrill whine. And with a meaty noise, it marks your new glory renowned dot in you. Um, the patterns, the song cut to you. The sounds, the resonance it chimes through your soul. Your flesh quivers and rends in the new patterns of the glory renown you are gaining. This glory renown is given you, there is a sense that you have definitely earned it, but the spirit is imparting it to you almost as a lesson or an incentive rather than as a reward. The spirit does not think highly enough of you. <laughs> And, and you're seeing your voice for what you should be because you should be a Kahalith and it is of the Kahalunum and it's concerned with who you are and how you are and obviously with those two failed roles it's not got a great impression of you even though you've raised it up for one step 
but the power nonetheless flows into you. So spend your XP and you gain a dot of glory. Nice. You gain the next step up in your moon gift immediately and you can unlock a new glory facet in a shadow gift you have. However, you've got all your glory facets. So until you get a new shadow gift, that's paused. I'm just going to explain something to listeners as well. Um, renown is that if you like the five part soul of werewolves, the five aspects in which they prove themselves and excel in the world. And when spirits uh, mark renown, it is literally carving their soul and flesh, which are fused as one to, to flow the essence more freely and empower them. Um, there's some interesting stuff with Renown. Mechanically, you can go into XP debt to get it, which is what um, is now happening with Thornbreaker. Um, but obviously, you're unlocked into paying the rest of it. And that's so that the act you get the Renown for doesn't get too divorced from the flow of XP, so it ends up being something many sessions later you bank, you cash in for it. The other thing interesting about them is, is that you can only get Renown. Wells can't mark their own Renown, generally. Um, is it because they are damaged in some way non-functional is it because luna and the great wolf um put it in as a safety limiter so wolves couldn't just power themselves up like a spirit can eventually to keep their creations in line is it simply because it's the nature of their harmonious existence it's simply a form of harmony with the rest of the world but werewolves generally need spirits to do it usually loons the pure use their totem lords if a werewolf is marking its own essence it, it renown it means something has gone very wrong in this case then Thornbreaker, you are marked. The strange, fulsome Kahalunim turns its attention. It passes its gaze of its many eyes over Stormbringer and says, One already marked for deeds of glory this moon. One who has already seen a step on the ladder. And then simply passes its song and gaze onto, um, onto Johnny. Do you have a verse to sing? Do you have a mark of blood to show? Do you have something worthy to tell? <clears throat> Not much of a storyteller. I fought Faceless Kill along with my blood brothers. Hmm. We beat it. We marked our territory under the glory of your moon. I marked our territory under the glory of our, your moon. Not yet even a journeyman, barely an apprentice, slinking to the shadows, keeping from view, far from playing to the crowd. But there is always a first step to take, always a first kill to make. Mark yourself in the blood of your foes. Let it be known. Let the blood show. And one day you will be more than you are. But a first step nonetheless. And it sings. And you feel the wrenching rip in your soul as it carves and tears with its voice your flesh and your essence. Again, you gain your dot of glory. You can unlock a glory facet in one of your gifts immediately. You yeah, don't get any new moon gift because it's not your moon. Um, and you obviously you spend the XP in your, and uh, note the XP debt. Yep. Um, I'm debating between either um, the evasion benefit or the nature one. And I got to think about that. I'm probably going to take the evasion one. Since I think it's very fitting based on the prey we took down and what I got. <laughs> Having done that to you, the spirit um, draws itself back and says, sings again, All of you are full pack marked, carved a bloody path this moon. Um, an impression made, a tale told, your deeds now sung in fearful throat. <clears throat> well done, well marked, well heeded, wolves. We have watched and we have blessed you. You have far to go still, but you've taken that first step. And I now watch you up in the sky with eyes of blood. Now they see what glories you will gather next. You have 
have, Hold on. I think I killed Vrent. You have the attention of my mistresses favored. Do not disappoint them. The war loons watch. And they will judge. And with that, it simply slides and folds sideways into the patch of moonlight that is passing over the lawn and is gone. Okay. With the passing of the spirit, um, still under the effect of Voice of Glory, uh, Thornbreaker is going to howl to call out to his spirit wolf brother to mm-hmm. try to... Uh, make amends for their their less than inspiring uh, interaction the last time they spoke. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so I've got three from presence, two from expression, plus another three from glory is eight, and I'm going to spend a point of willpower to reinforce that to 11. Okay. So I wrote that here. Is that what you were talking about, uh, Pete? In the- uh, it's not a point. Of, it's not a point of willpower, but like once per session, you can choose to cash in. Like you, you saw that you were going to howl and impress your wolf brother in a dream previously, and you can use that for like a bonus die on a roll. I'm going to save that for now. Um. All right. Three successes. Okay. <laughs> so you howl and this time it's stronger perhaps it's the admonishment of the caliph um and the fact that you run no you really have done some great things you give a stronger howl and bitter red sands emerges from the shadows in moments you don't think he was there before yet now he is looks at you you know judgingly but not hostilely or disappointedly you howled I came. I wanted to celebrate with you, brother. Celebrate what? The defeat of the faceless kill. The forging of my pack. The marking of our hunting grounds. It was a good hunt. You have ta- you have defeated a foe and claimed what is yours. I am pleased. Your actions show your purity. That you are bearing the legacy of your far- of your forebears. You destroyed, and it cleansed you. You could have gone further. You should perhaps you should have gone further. But you have cleansed yourself of what held you back. You should watch for the Hrafnir. They subsist on old pacts and agreements. They are bloated things of wars that are no longer theirs. They are spirits now of tributes paid. Some considered them parasites. You've made enemies. Honorably, but you have made enemies. That is good. What is there to test you if you are do not face conflict? It is good to see your your own pact's claim here. I will you firm and establish a firmer grasp on what is yours. He nods. This hunting ground is uncontrolled. It is wild. It is not a place of 
the harmonious hunt. But that is your task, is it not? It is. Destroy the old detritus. Cleanse the rot. Make it yours. Be glorious. I will, brother. Thank you for coming to witness me. It sort of pads among around the three of you, sniffing occasionally, shedding the sand that soon effervesces off, soon evaporates after it's sort of poured forth from it. Hmm. Your victories are seen. You are a brother of the pack. And he's not talking about your pack when he says that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Farewell, brother. The hunt always calls. But I am glad to see weight lifted from your shoulders. He grins and nods. And the wolf pads away again. Um, you regain a point of willpower for your touchstone interaction. Nice. Okay. And actually, um, I'm going to give... Think about touchstone interactions. Uh, Stormbringer... I'm going to give you a point of willpower earlier for your delving into the old gangs, the, the rugby tactics of uh, get this person loaded with alcohol and clean up the blood. Um, because yeah. it's in, it, the character going, oh yeah, I remember this stuff. It was that that connection to the, how, how it used to be before you turned right. into a ravening werewolf. So you get a point of willpower back for that as well. Okay, and there on, in, on the dark of the shadow is there all else to do? Nope. Nothing. Okay. I I in my bedroom though I'm gonna look at the mirror where my future self manifested. I'm I'm, I'm pointing to my my reflection. I'm not done yet. You're not quite sure if there's a response in your reflection. There's a slight there's a slight something. The spirit hasn't appeared for but there's like a sense that your message is received. So you sleep. Um the all of you gain one willpower point back for a good night's rest. And um, yeah, so new day, new dawn. Today's bright, blustery, windy, but bright for once. Not much cloud. The ground's still wet from the day's rain yesterday. Um, but it is a bright new day. Um, and it feels more than that. It, the weather seems to match how it feels for you as a pack. You wake up, and when you wake up this morning, there is a sense of reassurance that you're in your den, in your lair. Um, Nothing wrong has happened with your spirit, and indeed, Sunrock is back and is, uh, you know, it is um, in twi and, and to form there, there was no problem overnight. Um, you know, that bond burns in your heart still when you warm. It's like you've had a warm, vit revitalizing drink first thing. You, know, you wake up, it's like, oh, wow, a whole load of things were wrong with my existence that I didn't know were yesterday, and today they've all been set right, and it feels quite uplifting you know how your characters will deal with that is obviously up to them but it is it is like someone's injected you with some feel-good juice essentially <laughs> which makes sense because for the first time since we fought the three claimed i woke up with two willpower available today oh, wow. the first nice. time so it breaks I'm like not... he actually slept <laughs> i don't have that benefit right now i'm running on one uh well things that i know um <laughs> Well, you, I'm going to give you a point of willpower back for your little. I'm not done yet, as well, to your touchdown actually, <laughs> because that was it was message. It was a very brief interaction, but it was a meaningful one. So you get a point of willpower back from that. Uh... Um, things on the pack's agenda. Well, I don't know most of what's on the pack's agenda. You have a little. You have a little over a week until <laughs> the packs are going to turn up and see your trophy and throw down their own in a kind of in memory of our great Aunt Clarice. You have time. Um, your lawyer would like to speak to you, Mr. Galloway. Yeah. But apart from that, there's no. Um, your wolf blood is, have to, is obviously having to have some time to think about what she's going to do next. There, there was nothing I, I'm aware of that was like an urgent, pressing matter. So, what the pack want to do? Um, I'm going to start clearing. Like, I'm going to call the lawyer and establish a time to meet, and then until then, John is going to be. Um basically clearing out trying to clear as much trash and overgrown weeds and stuff around the territory okay so like your he, territory is quite big so are you focusing on the estate or are you sort of i'm focusing on the estate first and i'm gonna spread out from there <clears throat> okay 
So you're so he, you ring right up and um, uh, Mr. Tong was on the phone. Yes, well, yeah, of course we'd love to. You know, I'd like to come over and talk to you. I've got some documentation and things like. That. And so he says maybe after lunch, shortly after lunch. Um, so a morning of cleaning up for for Johnny. Anyone else doing anything of of, of interest or note um, of the morning? I don't want to get too much into like like tiny details, but if there's something brushing my room. teeth, right? Um, so. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> While brushing your teeth, a spirit engages you in battle. Yeah. Oh, and the um, it's the spirit of gingivitis. When you wake, there's the effervescing mark on your mirror who's afeard. It appears to happen every morning. <laughs> I think uh, I think I'm going to start referring to the spirit as Samantha. So he just says, morning, Samantha, and he just walks by it. <laughs> <laughs> um... I think at some point today, Thornbreaker is going to make yet another likely terrible attempt at connecting with uh, young Jenny, but uh, I think that is on the agenda. Okay, so you're going to go and hang out stables. Johnny's going to do some general maintenance. Um, Stormbringer, you've got uh, some work to do on trying to make this glass thing, Raven, but is there anything else you want to do? No, that's probably going to be about it. Okay. Um... So if I can have a um, uh, a Dex or Int plus Crafts roll for um, for Stormbringer as you get up and you start figuring this thing out in the morning, um, Johnny, you go down to the stables and um, sorry, not Johnny, uh, Stormbreaker, you go to stables and um, Jenny's there and she, you're trying to make a connection there. Um, you can she is now attached to you for as a touchstone for you, so you're now a functional touchstone. Um, can you give me a presence plus persuasion role for your general attempts to connect with her? Yes, and this time I'm using my voice of glory. He's he's riding okay. the uh, the wave of last night and has got a little don't bit you, of swagger. Wait, and because it's in the hunting ground, don't you get a plus two persuasion bonus no, for humans? No, em empathy, politics, and animal care. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yes. All right, so this um, is three was that two, success? two success on the craft, was it? Okay, so um, Stormbringer, so you go down to the glass house and you start figuring out and working out, and you go, well, this needs to be more than just a half melted bowl, right? Like some of your last attempts. This needs to be a bit swishier, ideally. Um, your totem turns up while you're doing it. Uh, you start, you've got to do a bit more planning, figuring out how you're going to do this. Are you doing it in parts? Are you doing, you know, there's various thoughts to how to, to do, do this process. And really, you're doing a lot of um, prep here going forward. Yeah. While you're doing it, the totem turns up. Um, so it's, uh, uh, Cinders is there, you know, watching, feeding from the act you're doing. The spirit is taking its essence when the totem arrives. Totem gives a rather scornful look to the little glass working spirit. Watches what you're doing. You are glorifying me. I nod as I work. Mm. Okay. Um, it adds one success to your effect. Ooh. Uh, it focuses, and there is a sense of shimmering. The silver and gold in it comes lambent, shines sort of yellow and white for a moment. And as you're working on this spinning shape, it, you, it's not quite your hands are being guided, but there's a moment where you're like you're in the zone, and it's almost like the glass you're working while trying to figure out how to do this kind of feather effect is curling and flowing exactly how you envisaged it. And you're not entirely sure how you managed to do it this time, but you're there going, no, you can feel the totem's influence. Um, the totem likes being glorified, apparently. Um, you get a strong sense of benevolence from the totem and, and sort of, I guess, smug self-satisfaction. It is very keen on you making emblems of it. Um, and um, it, I, as you do this, it, it, it notes what you're doing, lends its power to this. And while you are a long way from finishing this product, you cut out. You cut out. I love the, I love the timing of the cutouts because it seems like he's purposefully leaving us on a cliffhanger. He's like, and yeah. then. So the spirit is lending <laughs> power, um, and this is a process that could take some time. You know, you're gonna need to remake bits, figure out how you can do colors in the glass, things like that. Right. You know, and you want to make it good, obviously. But you're making good progress, and. The spirit is obviously happy, even with the fact you are doing this at all. So after you've been doing this, working this for some time, with the hours stopping for a snack and a drink, etc., um, it watches the the uh, 
the very gradual process you've made, but nonetheless, you've you've made some progress. You have something physical here to show for it, even if it's not going to be the final element you use. Um, uh, and and it says, "Hello, have I vanished? No, I'm back in." Um, it says, <laughs> "What will it say?" <laughs> you are a steadfast um, bearer of my of my power of my glory. Stand strong, and it and you feel um, something settle on you, a power settle on you, as Ooh. it bestows the steadfast condition on you. So the steadfast Ooh. condition, your character is confident and resolved. Um, when you fail a roll, you may choose to resolve this condition to treat the result as if you'd rolled a single success. If there was a chance die, you can resolve it to roll a normal die, but you can't get more to the chance. Um, right. So it gives you it gives you the steadfast condition. Um, it, you get a very strong sense that the spirit is um, very pleased with what you are doing, and obviously making iconography of it is pretty much right up its alley as exactly the kind of thing this totem really likes. Okay. Awesome. Um, Thornbreaker, how did you do on your persuasion? Right? I got four successes! Oh, wow! Okay, well, this time... You go and you help with mucking out the horse again, and this time Jay's like, "Oh, actually, that's really nice. Thank you." It, 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 she seems quite relieved that you're there, and basically, it's happily offloading work onto you while you're sure. there. Um, and you chat, and you, without trying to force anything this time, you get a much more natural conversation going. And one thing you pick up on is it was mentioned a while back by one of you about the possibility of keeping something going on in the stables, but um, I can't remember who it was that said it. That she, yes, so Stormbringer, she's she's obviously been thinking about it. She seems quite keen, and, and the sense that you're here again is making her relatively help, hopeful that something like that's actually going to happen. Like, she's feeling quite optimistic. And in general, the air of everything on this estate today seems much more optimistic and upbeat, and, like, things can be done and things can be achieved. You know, it seems to have infected everyone who's come here. Now, Johnny, you are going over the estate looking for trash to come up. Obviously, the mansion itself is huge and he's going to need a lot of work inside. And as you're picking over the grounds, you're beginning to get a much better impression of what is actually on the estate itself. Uh, and the answer is quite a lot. You know, a lot of it's everyone. You've got um, the um, the main mansion itself. There are a number around the edges of the estate. Um, you find a number of other buildings. There, there are five cottages. They're all in reasonably good condition. They've been maintained. They're not leaking the roof or anything, but they're all empty. And they all seem to be empty and uninhabited for some time. They will need maintenance and fixing up work. But there are all these little cottages around the edges. But they would have, they would have had their own little gardens and patches of land. But it's all overgrown. That's not the only thing you find. Um, apart from the massively overgrown garden features, at far end, now almost consumed by the copse of trees, blocked by the copse of trees in between them, there used to be like um, perhaps an ornamental, large ornamental pond or small ornamental lake that is now essentially a soggy mud pit um, oh, it overgrown with stuff you know it's not even there's not really a functional lake there anymore um, there's yeah there's rows of what obviously wants trees that were lined up and they've all overgrown it's all overgrown you find um, a folly amongst literally overgrown amongst that there is a an old Grecian style um, no uh, maybe not Grecian it looks almost maybe slightly Middle Eastern influences there's a folly you know like a little building um, uh, would be the place which the nobility would have gone sat at and had their tea and w enjoyed watching over the grounds you literally can't see it from about five meters away because there's so much crap overgrown around it and on it but looking quite finely detailed it's just you know it needs serious work um, there's um, uh, there's a whole section of very overgrown outbuildings that look like more glass houses and a sturdier brick thing that's mostly tumbled down um, there's a um a large, there's a big dip in one part of the ground, so it's sort of slumped. You're not quite sure what's that. There's old farm buildings, what was once farmland in the estate itself. Yeah, but beyond where the stables are, there was once more land that was cultivated for some purpose. Um, however, the most notable thing you find is the tomb. Again, buried in un overgrowth, past a, a paving road there. There's, it, the, the path to it has been maintained and the outside has been roughly maintained. But obviously otherwise no one's really coming here. Um, there's the there's, the, there's an old mausoleum um, with Gleesum, names of Gleesum, Gleesum Sykes family members um, 
on it. Uh, it, it's a small mausoleum, essentially, to presumably earlier the noble family who had owned this in prior generations. Um, Before my family, correct? Like we're talking. The Galloways and the Gleesham Sykes are intertwined. Um, oh, okay. So it, it, the um, it, looking at the, the numbers, it looks like the last people to be um, buried here were in the mid to late 1800s, and after that, the family stopped burying people here, possibly because there's no more space in it. And rather than build a new mausoleum, they were obviously being buried somewhere else. Um, but it's got a whole cracked damage, but like a whole litany of names of for, you know family of people who <clears throat> have been buried here of Gleesham Sykes and Galloway surnames. Okay. Um, uh, it's yeah, metal door is closed and is padlocked, but you've the keys you were given from Albert um, opens that up. Um, inside, it's a few steps down into a small inside area, and then there's basically um, the close end of the tomb is a very very old wooden, not wooden, stone um, tomb, you know, coffins essentially, but they're not really, you don't know if there's any remains in them or if they're just likenesses with, you know, names on them or carved likenesses. And then further down, it looks like maybe it was extended a bit, and there okay. is, is more modern stuff, including a set, some, some sort of jars and things like that, probably from ashes. Um, there's a lot of stuff on this estate alone, before you even get into the wider territory, and it is all in dire need of a landscaping crew to come in and fix shit up because you can't even f you know this is what you found on a really thorough search this morning god knows what else right. you'd find oh you cut out oh uh, sorry god knows what oh, else you'd back. find if you could actually see anything here right okay so after that morning of searching talking working um lunch and then a meeting with the lawyer mark tongham so we will I think we'll take the uh, break now, bio break and, and refreshments break here, and we'll come back for the scene with the lawyer, who is going to give you some rather important information going forwards. And okay. uh, so we'll be back for that shortly, folks. I think five minute break to refresh ourselves. If there's anyone in the chat who has any questions, queries, uh, commentaries, um, if anyone has any unfortunate legal situations they would think the pack should now face sprung on them, please let us know in the. In, in the and we'll see you all again very shortly. Can think of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> okay, you're right. <laughs> no. <sighs> All right, guys. So we'll be right back in uh, five minutes. All right, guys, how are we doing today? Johnny Cole, my lawyer, Galloway. Keep them coming, Morvin. These are gold. I love it.
I am feeling a bit better, uh, Shara. Thank you for uh, for checking in on me. I was recently battling a sinus infection, but I am feeling much better than I was. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Shower's the big sister of the group for sure. <clears throat> okay. Oh, hello again. Hello. A uh, question for you, Chris. Did I mm -hmm. get a point of willpower back from my interaction with Jenny? Um, yes, you will. You get a point of willpower back from that. Oh, actually, um, what about me exploring the estate, the inheritance? That's true. I'll give you one point for that as well. After a, after a long drought, I have resources to spend again. This is nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there anything in chat? Um, Morvin, Morvin Mad has uh, taken to giving, giving Johnny impromptu nicknames for basically everything he does, which is very yeah. entertaining. The most recent one is Johnny Call My Lawyer Galloway, so that is mm -hmm. uh, worth discussing. Um... Yeah, I'm so I'm so fancy. I have an I have an attorney for her. <laughs> <laughs> on retainer. On retainer. Shara says Thornbreaker seems to be doing much better. Must be the sleep. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yeah, Thornbreaker said. Apart from those two unfortunate bodge social roles with the Kahaluna, um, the the his roles have been a bit more well because you haven't been rolling five dice for stuff, so that's why. <laughs> right. Um. But yeah, one thing to remember is remember you've got voice of glory because that does give a good I chunk do of keep, bonus points. I do keep forgetting that on the expression rolls, and I have to remember does that. Does come at the essence cost, but you know, but I've been doing all right on essence. That I haven't had to spend too much of. Yeah, and, um, and of course you get more. The you know the the locust produces more every day. Um, Speaking of, we yeah, should so, probably hit that also at some point. Yeah, we'll get to that once um, once Keith's back, so we can sort of we can Divvy divvy up any you want as well for that. Sure. I mean, because you're, it's producing um, it's producing six essence a day, which just means a nice, fairly easy split for stuff as well. You can just go like, right, everyone gets two essences at easy way to do it. But but some of you are more likely to be heavy essence users than others in certain situations. Um, pardon me. So um, so yeah. Um, yeah. I would we'll just, we'll just wait for Keith. Um, Combat for me about. is. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm debating right now, Chris. E I either want to take Fog of War for mm -hmm. my glory, or um, Black Earth. What is it? The, the Black Earth, Red Hunger. Yeah. Yeah, they're both good, and they both yeah. do very different things. Um, the one of the questions is which you think is going to give you the utility you're looking for. Um. Yeah, like the the thing is, is firearms aren't super common in England, right? No, although you would be surprised at the number of shotguns around in Dorset. Uh, yeah, I'd rather avoid getting hit with silver bug shots on this. It's it's, it's, it's fine. It's because farmers tend are allowed to have shotguns uh, more, much more accessible. So, um, have you seen? Have any of you seen Hot Fuzz? Yes. Right. Who's got guns? Farmers and farmers' mums. And it's not entirely wrong. And, you know, they've got an armory with some really random stuff in it. Um, the, you do tend to get a little bit in the UK. There are some interesting weapons still kicking around in people's possession from the war. Um, so there, I, I believe there was an incident with an old woman who had like a heavy machine gun or something. Um, 
that was like just her her, her husband's from the war. He he had the, he'd been he gotten this somehow, and and she still had it decades later. And I was like, oh, there's really? this granny with a fucking uh, you know tripod mounted kind of thing in her in in a cabinet or whatever. Um, Man, at so, some point Johnny's going to want to hit somebody with a peace lily. Yeah. So um so now that uh, Keith's back, one thing we we're just mentioning as well was the locus produ- has produced six more essence today. So if the pack want to divvy that essence up, you can go ahead and do that now if you want before we forget. Um how short sure are you I'll guys? Grab... I'm at 7, but like now two points will put me up to 9. <clears throat> same. Um same. Okay. So if you just do for instance two points each, that gets you all nicely Nicely tanked up and much more full, especially after getting your fill out of the Hrafnir as well, because um, it burned a lot of essence in that combat and it still had like ten left. But so it was a good amount for you to feast on. So, um, Mister uh, Marcus Tongham turns up in a rather nice in a BMW, nice nice car, and um, soon enough is inside laying out papers and files on your on the sturdy kitchen table which has become something of a de facto meeting point at the moment while most like three quarters of the mansion is still under dust sheets i am going to be making tea okay so uh, is everyone going to be here or is anyone going to make their be absent pointedly <clears throat> no okay um yeah so the the lawyer has laid his stuff out he's well i'm glad to see you're settling in and uh uh, you and your friends. Um, we've got a few things to talk about today. Uh, um, there, there's some, I would say there's good news and there's bad news, so much as there, there are complexities. Um, I'm not quite sure how this works over in, in the US, or if you, your different states probably have different laws around this, but um, there's a process we're going through with this inheritance, essentially. Um, one of the things we're doing, we're still in a state where we are um, calculating uh, certain values because of inheritance tax which is a tax that has to be paid on the deceased estate. Now, because your aunt made some charitable, clever charitable donations that reduced the amount of inheritance tax to pay, and because you personally are a blood descendant, there, that reduces that, that fiddles around the, the thresholds above and below where you have to pay tax. Now, what we did um, was a certain portion of the estate that was not assigned directly via the inheritance, the will itself, was essentially liquidated. Um, and not, when I say estate, I don't mean the building, I mean her, all her possessions. Was estate was liquidated to pay uh, for the inheritance tax across the board. Okay. However, because a building like this is quite hard to value, we're still waiting for the valuations to come in for the estate <clears> you've been <throat> assigned. Um, now, I, obviously, you know it's a bit of a windfall getting a building like this. You know, an old old building. I mean, I, do 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 you understand how much this building's worth? I mean, this estate. Um, hundreds of thousands of pounds, if not millions. We're we're talking in the millions. Yes. Okay. Now, the fact it's in a very poor condition is obviously a tragedy, but it's also mildly advantageous because it currently reduces the value of the estate for the purposes of calculating tax. And again, um, obviously, from the liquidated portion, the unassigned portion of the state that's been liquidated to pay for the tax on the rest, um, we have paid for a portion of it, and we have prepaid. There was a six-month window before uh, the remainder will be... Uh, but, so we are waiting still for the valuation to come in on this place, solidly. Okay. I need to warn you, however, that... Even though we have paid to come out, the, the amount in the will that was already specifically a, a assigned to people, and the fact that you earning a state means you have essentially most likely been given the largest portion of the value of the uh, the, the, the deceased estate, mm-hmm. means there is likely to still be some inheritance tax to pay. Okay. I can't say exactly how much it will be. Um you know, if if you hadn't expressed the intention to obviously take the estate yourself, there would be um, that we would have sold. We'd probably look at selling the estate, um, and obviously you wouldn't get as much money as it really is worth in its current condition. Um, and there'd be tax, or there'd be further taxes on things like the capital gains. There'd be more taxes for you to pay if you sell the estate. But that you know, I need to warn you that you will need to think about finances when the valuations come in. Um, now, obviously, this place, if it was up and running, could bring in certain income streams. You know, obviously, the cottages used to have the cottages would rent. Um, obviously, uh, your great aunt, um, there used to be families in each of the cottages. And about 30 years ago, your great aunt um, evicted them all. Uh, it was a bit of a scandal at the time, if I'm honest. Not really my place to talk about it. 
um, okay. you know, compared to what the, obviously what those families went through. But she, uh, it was quite a local uh, bit of news when she did that. Obviously, those could be uh, rented out again if they were put in good condition to bring you income. There, there's other safety, but you will need to think, uh, Mr. Galloway, about the money. I'm afraid to say. I, and I know you're, you're young Americans, you know, traveling the world, enjoying uh, the fruits of, of, your, of your windfall, but uh, the harsh reality is money is going to be important and something for you to think through. For. He's focusing this very much on Johnny as well right. as the inheritor. Um, uh, obviously, because the other two guys are relatives, friends, partners. He doesn't know. He's not paying. He's not going to pry. Now, um, so if you wish to continue inhabiting here, that's something to about. If you wish to sell the property, oh, you cut out. Sorry, you, ah, you cut you, out. You're back. If if you wish to sell the property, please do let us know, and we can move towards liquidating it. Um, if you wish to remain, then obviously we will um, we will talk about the finance of that going forwards. There are obviously other aspects of the finances, the, the running costs of an estate like this, the, the council, the tax you'll have to pay the council, etc., etc. Again, all reasons to think about your own personal financial security and where you're going to get the money from to run this place. Now, that aside, there are a number of other issues. Um, the first is that this is a grade one listed building. Do you uh, understand what that means? No. Okay, well, a listed building means that you cannot make changes, significant changes to the property uh, or the buildings inside it without permission from the Dorset Council. So it's like a historical building from the States. Yes, exactly. It, it, it's exactly that kind of thing. This is a historic building of exceptional historical importance. I mean, I don't know how much you know about the history of this building, but uh, some uh, there is certain there are claims that the house design itself was by uh, the Elizabeth Lady Wilbraham at the time. The plans were originally attributed to Sir Christopher Wren, very famous, but in fact, it's believed it was Sir Lady Wilbraham. So it's, it's a fantastic. The history of this place is amazing. The the garden, the landscaping design is a is a genuine and verified um, Fabry Gillot design. Obviously, buried now. Um, what I will say, and I'm not encouraging this in any way, but obviously some landowners, when they wish to get rid of listed features, they allow them to simply become tumbled down and overrun by nature until they collapse. <clears throat> I don't really think that's what your great aunt was trying to do here. It's sadly just neglect. But the famous designers and architects involved in the creation of this place are many over the years. Um, the features are extremely valuable, but it means you can't simply change what you want willy-nilly. Now, for most things, let's say you wanted to install some modern heating systems in the cottages. The can't, chances are, obviously, there'll be the cultural panel would have to look at it, but it's almost certainly to be waved through, as long as you're not doing major structural damage. Now, the art in this building, he gestures at the mansion, now, that's a different matter. You know, this place is... Um, very historically significant. The plaster work by the Bastard Brothers of Blandford... Um, is uh, is exceptional and one of the a very famous piece by 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 the by them uh from dating from the early late 1600s early 1700s um so if you were thinking about redesigning this i'm afraid in some trendy hip kind of uh, resort or something it's not really likely to happen that easily uh, it will require a lot of paperwork and a lot of uh, bureaucracy to really make significant changes to the to the mansion itself in case you have any ideas, if you were to go ahead and make significant changes without getting them cleared, you would be obviously um, uh, legally liable. And, and Johnny's, uh, for... thinking, Johnny's in, in the back of it is thinking, wish I wasn't yielded off right now. <laughs> so and, I do need and to will there you. be will there be surprise inspections? Says. It's hard to say. It depends how much interest the council take. I don't know how much attention they've been paying, but it's certainly possible that someone would want to check up, and especially if they were to hear anything that, for example, you decided to sledgehammer your way through a few of the adjoining walls in some of the old, art, you know, the drawing room and the and the, the billiards room next to it, which has some fantastic stuff on the wall. You know, if that got through to them, then obviously they would be legally liable in those circumstances for the damage you've done to the historical decorations. Now, I'm not saying don't think about planning and changing the place at all. Just you have to be very careful about what you do in getting clearance. I would be very interested in meeting the council, just for a friendly introduction, of course. Well, I mean, you could certainly probably meet some. So there, so there's the town count. There's the Gleesham council itself. Obviously, the councillors flat are going to be much. And, and let's face it, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. You've just come into an estate which is probably in the value, if it were in good condition, of roughly five to six million pounds. 
as far as most locals are concerned, you are essentially nouveau riche, obviously, but you're not nobody. I imagine there'll be plenty of doors open to you among some of the local movers and shakers, especially the Gleesham Council. The Dorset Council, the wider county council, is a slightly different matter. Obviously, you can get in touch with them, but uh, some of their dignitaries will be quite open to you. But, uh, you know, obviously, they're scattered all over Dorset, and it's a bit more... Um, it's a little less personal uh, until you start making shaking the right hands and uh, getting invited to the right parties. Obviously, if you do manage that, then you'll probably find a lot of doors open to you for all sorts of changes in this place fairly quickly. Um, but, you know, don't do anything... Sorry to say, don't do anything awful and gaudy like deciding you're going to cover everything in gilt um, US flags or something, you know, because unfortunately it's likely to very quickly get shot down. People around here don't like that kind of thing. I'm sure. not suggesting that you're sort of... I'm not trying to imply any sort of gauche culturelessness on the part of people from the United States, but it, that's, it's part of the, the, the stereotype, shall we say. And it's partly what some people may be expecting from you. I mean, we're not sitting on oil here, so that's fine. <laughs> yes, no, uh, 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 yes, he doesn't, look, he doesn't look like he knows whether he should force a laugh or not. Th Th Thornbreaker um, gives the lawyer a withering glare. <laughs> you cut out, Dan. I said Thornbreaker gives the lawyer a withering glare. <laughs> he, he, he sort of doesn't quite, you know, know, know how to... Um, now, so, there's some paperwork here for you to sign. Now, the other thing we need to cover is the fact that various people need to come pick up their elements of the inheritance. Um, we've also given you time. So I, I think in about three days' time, um, I would like to schedule the time for people to pick up their aspects of the estate from from here if you are amenable to that that's fine give me a okay. list oh yes of course we'll give you a list and they will be given uh, we'll try and focus if we can everything onto one day so that people are getting your hair and then get out of your hair again and give you the minimum problems going forward so here are these documents sign uh, I, but by the way why, why matter i would i have some suggestions for you again friendly suggestions obviously uh, in my my you know from a purely professional relationship Firstly, I would suggest you get yourself an accountant, Mr. Galloway, um, because you are, if you plan to stay, you are going to have to deal in some financial matters that are going to be tricky to tackle, and a place like this has a lot of incomings and outgoings. And on that note, I would suggest you consider an estates manager as well. Um, the old lady obviously uh, has, has, you know, paying for these, just simply paying for water, electricity, and all the council payments. I don't know if old Albert handled these things for much of this stuff for her, but suffice to say, unless you, if you plan to make something of this place, you're going to need someone who's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. The, the heavy, yes, the non-physical heavy lifting of pulling all the threads together for you so you don't find yourself buried in bills and, and contracts and, and, and so forth every day. I mean, you have five properties on your estate that could house families. Are you, are you really going to be around managing the rental contracts and day-to-day -day matters there yourself? Right. I don't mean to imply you can't, um, but I have to say my mental image of, of you know some young Americans coming over from the States to dwell in a place like this doesn't involve you all sitting down to, uh, you know, calculate all the daily finances if I'm honest alright no uh, do you have any suggestions um no uh, not either I mean I can I, well I can uh, dig through and see uh, some of our you know the, the um, accountants we recommend see if any of them would be suitable to, say, to help you out with this certainly the estates manager isn't really my kind of business though okay perhaps the accountant will know somebody or I'll, I'll dig around town um So, outside of this, Johnny's got a couple of dots of resources. I was wondering if I could, like in game, have those resources invested and then have the and then use that as justification later to mm -hmm. buy additional dots of resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the first so, one. One thing to note is that the, to an extent, some. Uh, well, sorry, carry on with what you're saying before. before I... Uh, no, that was basically it. So he would also, like Johnny personally, is also in, look, like interested in looking like in, like I guess I like a financial manager and investor who can handle that of resources and potentially cause it to grow. Yeah. Um, one thing to note is you potentially a state like this can. Uh, you can potentially an estate like this can make a lot of money. 
Um, mm -hmm. You just need someone to actually make it happen and make it function. Because from what the lawyer's saying, you may be about to be landed with the need to take Evicted. a very loan out. Right. Um, which is slightly going... Uh, resources abstracts around that. Um, which is fine, and but to an extent, you can you can have dots of resources while also having a whack and great loan you need to pay off at the same time, as it were. And it's about finding that you know sort of the balance narratively around that. Yeah. Um, for now, though, he, he, once he's cleared, if you're happy with the, the things later on, he, he he's he's done with his stuff. He's got you to sign papers. He's warned you about the finances and the listed building status. So if Stormbringer goes around sledgehammering the uh, the Kestrel artwork, it will actually be a crime uh, if anyone notices. <laughs> Not that so I'm sure can't... Stormbringer was thinking of doing anything like that. Um, Thornbreaker asks if uh, if the lawyer knows who is uh, in charge of managing the estate tax from uh, from the town. Yeah, so he gives um, a uh, he talks about uh, thing he says. Um, well, you need to talk to the councilman in general, but I think the person you probably want to talk to about that is a good con I, I talked to Miss Hatchet, Stella Hatchet. She's one of the counts town councilwomen. And while you will not be, um, while the tax you'll be paying is not directly to the Gleesham Town Council, she is very well known for helping out people who need to deal with some of the financial stuff relating to the county council. Anyway, uh, if there's nothing else, I will uh, I will leave you to your day, and I will get on with things. Oh, um, that's it for me. Uh, Bill, you have any questions? I had to make sure I use Bill around yeah. the herd. Thornbreaker and Stormbringer, do you have any questions? Who not, Thornbreaker not for the moment. My, my buddy's here. <laughs> not for the moment. Also known as Bill and Jack. Hmm. Um... Okay, well, he, he makes his excuses, his excuses and leaves. The totem is of watching in Twilight as this is going on, but doesn't say anything. It's not particularly concerned with matters of money and, and law. Oh. All right, I need to drop um, my there's old farmland that could be repurposed here to grow crops and potentially sell for the cash and renting the cottages isn't a big deal but I'm low to do so to people we don't know I don't we... want unrelated eyes watching our coming and going no those would be for pack members correct way on the outside honestly I don't know that we can reliably come up with the money to pay these taxes in short order I suggest right. we take a more Uratha approach to this. The humans are potentially a threat to our territory just as much as the spirits are. I say we apply a little pressure. In what regard? <laughs> he he gives he gives you the the coldest, calmest what effing regard do you think I mean, stare. <laughs> Uh, you want to go knocking heads, right? Got it, basically. <laughs> it's one way to do it. Stormbringer. He's uh, he's sitting there tapping his foot, thinking. <clears throat> Are we calling out a Cisco Don, a financial accounts manager? <laughs> Where you hey, did you say that in game? I, I actually say that in game. Don't be ridiculous. These aren't worthy prey. He turns <laughs> back to Jack. Good thing there's no Iron Masters here. What was that? Where do you want to apply this pressure? I think this. Stella Hatchet individual who handles the financial information might be a good starting point. Government officials misappropriate funds all the time. If she can simply make it appear that we've met the tax requirement, it would streamline the uh, the efforts. <clears throat> Sure.
shot and all. Agreed. It's one way to do it. We could have... Johnny, find out where she lives. Find out what room she can work every day. I'm sure we have a few days to figure this out. That shouldn't be too hard. Right? I'll get on that. Okay. At the same time, Johnny does realize he wants to make his investment grow, so... Like, it, it, it's nice to do things the illegal way, but sometimes we have to do things legally. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. So, can I use nowhere to hide to call Stella Hatchet my prey to find out where she lives? Let's have a look and see if you can pull that one off. It's a uh, merit. Uh, it's nowhere to run. And it's uh, page 107. Yeah. Um, so you need, to, you need to get your eyes on her. Okay. And it will tell you safe place and delicate box. So potentially, yes, uh, you could well find out where her, um, where, her, where her home is. If you can get your eyes on her. Okay. So what I'm going to do is... Um, so she works for, like, the Gleesham City Council, basically, right? The, the town council. Yeah, she's a town councillor. She's not, oh. she doesn't, she's not a, um, she's a councillor rather than a random, like, civil servant. She's someone who is elected. So, um, I'm going to head into town um, okay. and do this whole classic, um, get, like, a cup, cup of coffee. I'm going to walk over to the uh, city council. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see if she's got, like, an assigned parking spot. Okay. What I'm going to do at this point, we are going to do that, but I'm, I'm going to sort of shift the perspective a little bit overall. Okay. We've got some three days till a bunch of people turn up to pick up their stuff from your place. And what I'd like to do is we will do specific. Oh. Yeah, okay. I will sort of assume that, or you let me know what you're doing in generality rather than doing it day by day, fine details, because I think we can move the zoom out a little bit apart sure. from the specific scene. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got slight... You... Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, you can yeah. add a little bit. Okay. Um, so if you, so let's talk a bit about those three days and what's going to happen in it. Obviously, <laughs> one thing is trying to figure this stuff out with um, <coughs> with uh, Councillor Hatchet. So part of that is you're sending the Araka off to do the scouting and try and make the target and figure out the details and stuff to set up something there. Um, is there anything else in those three days in general you're doing? Because obviously we've got stuff like, you know, Jack is working on the glass working and uh, things like this, but is there any wider goals you've got apart from the general day-to-day -day stuff you want to tackle? Um, um, Johnny kind of wants to really clean up that, like, lake sitting area because mm -hmm. he feels like it would yeah. be super zen when it's when it's all set up. <laughs> yep. Um, on, thing thing on top of that, like, I guess Johnny's also, while he's trying to locate Cell Hatchet, he might be trying to see if there's a, a locus in Gleesham. Mm -hmm. And so, so we've got clearing the garden and scouting Gleesham. Anything else over the next few days from from um, from Stormbringer? Um. So Jack is is kind of realizing that we may need to get some sort of reliable transport, um, mm -hmm. and probably would be helpful if one of us could drive it. <laughs> So yeah. he's going to look into maybe, um, you know, yeah, maybe convincing Mary to teach him how to drive. Okay. Appropriately okay, yeah. on the, the road. Yeah. Or right, depending on which way you're <laughs> which way you're looking at it. Okay. So getting uh, some driving lessons. Yeah. Other than that, uh, just to kind of uh, explain why I spend some points and get a, a dot and drive just so we don't, yeah. you know, crash in the, the rain again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're not driving by the seat of our pants quite literally yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. um and then so i guess uh, i guess at some point um stormbringer and thornbreaker are going to sit down and kind of figure out a plan while johnny does the scouting as to how exactly what exactly the best way to go about this is and i'm i'm thinking uh 
and this is kind of Jack's logic, is that we're just going to put her on edge. Random accidents that just seem to happen to her that kind of frazzle her. And that's when you approach with the more assertive... You can make this go away. <laughs> some, numbers got, some numbers got crossed and this has been paid already. Um, and so you set her off on edge with things like, you know, a random nail in the tire that, that ru- you know, that, that ruins her day and, and, you know, maybe seeing one of us in wolf form off in the distance type thing, like she's being hunted almost, and, and, and that whole thing to just set somebody on edge and, and, and unnerve somebody and then move in with the the social aspect of, you know, you're going to do this and intimidate you, um, you know, because there, there are a lot of almost like omens that they that she sees. Um, and then when we step in, it's like, oh, that's what that was about, and I'm terrified. So I'm just going to do it and make it all go away. Unless, Dan, you have uh-huh. a idea no i think that makes sense i think when we actually go for the full-on intimidation i think it makes sense to have thornbreaker do it i'll do it in dalu form and i'll use voice of glory to make it resonate more fearfully so Uh, i'm just just gonna say you got your third moon gift if we call a sister da on her you can like haunt her dreams that's true that is true and I'm just putting it out there, once a month for the hunting ground, we do have to perform a Sisker Dot. Okay. Or a regular right. hunt. So, with that intimidation, is that something we could benefit from our group? Um, what the hell is the name of that thing? Though? Dynamics. Dynamics. Yeah. Yes, if you do like a setup, as it were, for it, then you would be able because to I've do... Got quite a few, I've got... A good the three dots in, in intimidation and two dots in presence and manipulation. So I've got a decent dice pool to contribute to that um, yeah. role. Sure. And, yeah, that would be something ex- you could do a extraneous, And extraneous bonuses, I'm assuming, from all the setup we're doing beforehand, too. So, Right. Okay, so I've got on my list now, then. I've got scouting, um, driving lessons, clearing up the, the, anything from Thornbreaker. Uh, just reinforcing that, you know, budding bond with uh, with Jenny to strengthen his uh, his okay. flesh touchstone at the moment. Okay. And, so and, then... and to our listeners, yes, right now we are doing bookkeeping. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, it is. Um, it's kind of unfortunately you are a pack of killer werewolves and you've <laughs> killed a bunch of stuff and torn things apart and now you have to deal with the greatest foe of all, which is the human world and its necessities to actually keep functioning, like paying your bills. Um, <laughs> So the day the week is progressing. You know, you're making progress and work around clearing the mansion, getting all. This mansion has a lot of rooms. Some of them are very, very nicely decorated. They're just empty of anything interesting or bits of furniture with dust sheets over them. You know, it's it's it, it, this was a really grand mansion once, and it could be again. Um, there's just work that needs to be done in the gardens. You know, Johnny's especially focusing around this, this this ornamental lake that is now a soggy morass. It's going to need lots of work around the edges, but you've got a lot of the original stone edging is still there. It's just it's not really a lake so much as wet. Right. In it now, you know, there's a lot of work to do, but just even literally getting some of Albert's old tools from one of the sheds and just cutting back a bunch of the wild growth, and you're starting to get a sense of hold on, how would this look if it was open? How must it once have looked? Um. Stormbringer. So um, Mary turns up after a couple of days, turns up with her bags at the mansion and goes, well, fuck it, I'm coming here then. <laughs> you know, I, I will put in my notice and I'll live here rent free. <clears throat> fuck it. So uh, looking both angry, resigned, but also determined. Looks in general horror at the state of the place. Now she sees you guys working, like clearing stuff in the mansion things and goes, this place needs someone to fucking take the helm of what the hell's going on here. Um, it does mean she's much more available for the driving lessons for Jack. Yeah. Um, and basically, she takes you off to an area what of... What is Mary doing the profession again? Sorry? What is Mary's profession again? Um, she's in help? marketing. Okay. Oh, um, she can market the hell out of this place once we get it up and running. Yeah, she's <laughs> right. Mar- she's she can figure out what to do to, to earn income. 
Yeah, well, she still, still she still has to go to her job at the moment, but she is able <laughs> right. to now. She's actually in the same place. She takes one of the small, one of the many uh, disused rooms, and basically, which doesn't even have a bed in it, just has like a camp bed at the moment for her, so she can get her stuff moved over from her other place. Um, she has a little, rather beaten up red car that she then takes Jack out a few, few times to like a, a, some fields nearby. Um, uh, and, and lets you and basically shows you to drive and it's a bit bumpy going on if there's an old there's, a, there's an old disused airfield um when i mean say if i don't mean like a modern day fantastic thing they, they literally it's a swathe of field with some sections that are broken now slightly broken concrete runway um right. and a collapsed old building in contact mm-hmm. she mary's like well this was some um it was in the 50s probably late 40s um, now, of course, it's actually quite a good. A lot of people come here to learn how to drive to the beginning because you can just scoot around without worrying about things. So she gets you in a car, and you know you don't drive into any trees or anything. You have to deal with her backseat driving. No, don't do that because it's not like um, you know modern driving lessons. The instructor often has some stuff to take the helm and control it. She doesn't have that in here, so she mostly grips in terror when you start. You know things start to go slightly awry and hopes that you're not going to crash into anything. And. Um, uh, and you know, Johnny, you making more contact with with, um, with sorry Thornbreaker, making more contact with with Jenny, um, and uh, you do occasionally catch her again in the woods nearby you know, without approaching, seeing her again, talk. Yeah. Um, and sometimes she goes. There's um, one of the neighbouring properties. Uh, there's a, has a large guard dog uh, at the edge of their land. She often goes and chats to it for a bit. Obviously, it, it doesn't really do much. It just seems to enjoy the attention. Um, you. Can I have a, a wits plus empathy roll from you? Yes, you may. Wits. Three empathy. The hunting grounds benefit applies for that now, right? Yes, it does. And that's how so many extra two. dice? Two. Two. So that's three, four, five, six mm. dice. Got you over that five. Yeah, right. <laughs> four successes. Okay. Um, she's still troubled, but some of the weight seems to have lifted for now. Um, you can't get her to open up to you about what the hell the witch thing was about. Uh, she still seems very guarded about that. But um, she is very interested as well. Obviously, she's catching wind of the fact that you know that you guys are obviously settling in for long term, and is um, she is uncertain about the future of the stables, but very interested in continuing, as you know already. But you are also getting the impression, given the amount of times you see her, she's um, she spends more time here than she needs to from the amount of money she gets paid from the fund, you know. Um, but uh, she isn't spending an awful lot of time at home. Um, uh, but that doesn't seem to be. She's not like frightened of going home. She's not worried about home. This appears to be quite an escape for her. Um, and uh, she doesn't like going to the town itself at all really quite averse to the idea like when she needs to go and buy if she needs to get something like some new rubber gloves or something for cleaning things here she will do anything she can to go to for instance um Corndall magnus tiny shop rather than go into gleesham for it she seems very averse to that whatever she's really upset whatever she's afraid of is in gleesham um thornbreaker is gonna sort of comment gently on that and be like i've noticed you don't seem to like the town much is there a reason why she will, as what well, as long as you're being gentle about it, she will very ca- politely divert, divulge, and never and not answer directly. So I think she she will try and scoot round it. She doesn't really want to talk about it clearly, or rather, she's not willing to for one reason or another. It's just not quite clear why. Um, um w- without confronting her directly, he's gonna basically be like, I get an unfeeling, an un easy feeling when I'm in the town also. Feels like something's going on there that I can't put my finger on. So you saying that basically makes her like she's not she's still not really responding directly or engaging you on it but you're clearly prodding in the right kind of direction like you she's clearly get you're getting a reaction she just she with yeah with four successes I'll say you maybe the problem is because remember, she, as far as she's concerned, you're some guy, and she's sure. a wolf blooded who can go and talk to animals in the woods. So she's fairly, sh- you know, aware of shit is that is weird. Um, and she's never mentioned that she can talk down to shit because, of course, why would you? You'd think she was in. She'd think she was mad. Mm-hmm. Um, you get there's there's a similar issue with whatever's up with the town. She won't tell you, 
not because she at this point not because she doesn't trust you per se but because she thinks that if she tells you you'll be like what you know that doesn't make sense like if she said to you i can speak to animals sure you go you're mad she, similar kind of thing for whatever's going on in the town she doesn't want to talk about because she just doesn't think that you will understand or believe her uh, deciding when is the time for me to pull pull the the cover off this thing and and uh, oh, yes, um, yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Rip. I'm a werewolf. That was my right. skin. Uh, You're scouting the town while trying to check out to, to get information on Stella Hatchet. Now, I would first like you to give me. You are I think a wits plus wits plus survival roll. Uh, current leverage investigation. Okay. No, no. Uh, hey, investigation actually is probably. I was thinking sort of tracking, tracking, but wits plus investigation is probably the better way to do it. Okay. Kind of want this to succeed. I'm going to throw a willpower dot on it, especially because it's like the next day, kind of. Yeah. Are we? Yeah. yeah, this will. Yeah, we. You will. The by the end of the. You know, by the time we get to any scenes, we'll probably have at least a day or two to regain willpower off as well. Because uh, I'm seeing this is taking time. You're working on stuff at the, trying to get the estate into vaguely good order. You're hacking things back. You're cleaning stuff up. You're trying to get driving lessons. Talk to people. All this stuff is going on. It's sort of a, a bit of a flow at this point. Uh, three successes. Oh, uh, okay. Chris. On top of that, at like night, uh, Johnny's just trying to collect the stuff around the estate that he knows people are picking up, so it can be like they're in and out. He doesn't want them sticking around, especially the people that eventually show up. Oh, the people who are going to, that went to pick up things. They're going to turn up. I said in three days' time, they're all going to turn up during the day. Yeah, um, he's just kind of eat. arranging everything in one room, so he right. Okay, there's, you're... there's as minimal interaction with them as he can. Yes. I understand. Yeah, I get it now. Um, so, with three sets of investigation, so Gleesham is a town, as you know, it's, it's mm. ch much stronger than Cornwall Magna, and um, it's got various sections of it. Um, you know, the place you've been hanging out in, uh, Glees Place, which is the, the, the centre itself, which is in um, Gleesbrook. Uh, Gleesbrook is um, the the new sort of town, is that centre, by, uh, it's by the riverside. Um, and there are other areas there's um the other areas of it um that are you know you see that the sprawling estate overrunning the old rural area in Torncliff. um mm -hmm. there's there's various areas i can give you details of at some point but i, I won't give you the full like map out of that i might do that in between sessions to give you like a little list of stuff in the uh, how the town is laid out and the different areas and which is the rich area and which is the crappy area and that kind of thing the areas that you are sort of looking at fo focusing on here is um, Gilcom and Gleesbrook. Gilcom is the modern sort of is the um, modern centre. The old centre is in Blankamarsh, but and Gleesbrook is where a lot of stuff like the the the, the plaza is and, and some of the um, things like that. So let's have a look on here. Where are we looking at? It is... Oh yes, there we go. Actually, it's quite. Oh. Uh, you can is... Yeah, I was just I was thinking so. I'm trying to get my thoughts in order. I was trying to think too many different things at once. So, God, scouting and finding Stella. I saw two linked but slightly different things. So, Gleesham has several different regions or districts, as it were, different neighbourhoods, um, varying from the um, the uh, the rundown areas of well, the, the sprawling estates of Torncliff to the richer Handley area. Um, you'd spend a lot of your time so far when you're visiting in Gleesbrook, which is the, the sort of the city, the sort of the um, the new centre, um, but the place you want is um, a neighborhood that is not so much um, housing. It's a lot of, sort of some new offices, new things like that, and um, mixed in with the old buildings. The buildings of um, Gleesham are this mixture of lovely old Georgian architecture and, and more modern structures and the sprawling estates themselves. And um, in Gilcom, the building you find yourself gravitating towards is called Galloway House. It is. It used to be um, some sort of from the from the plaque outside. It looks like your family, your ancestors, your predecessors, um, contributed towards the building of the Gall Galloway House, and it was it was a merchant um, building for the merchant traders. There's some link to the merchant traders of Pool, which is one of the town cities on the south coast, and to Newfoundland apparently, but you don't know the, the, the context of that. It is now one of the council offices. 
Okay. Right. It's not the town. The town hall is on the you know the, the main plaza of some distance away. This is um this is one more like this is one of the offices that a lot of the council stuff runs out of you know the the, the guts and uh, of making the bureaucracy function. Um, around town where you've been checking out outside of that around town there are you know there are other places you know the, um, Gleesham has its own rather anemic night scene you know there's a nightclub called possession there's um uh, there's a ambiguously mediterranean wine bar um there's a really grubby club called tigers you're not sure if it's a strip bar or something it's really horrible um and, and there's a mixture of shops you know from from quaint little things of little people's tiny tiny little businesses selling random stuff uh handcrafts and things like that through to you know the things like the tesco supermarkets and stuff like that but um galloway house is where you first spot Stella. Stella is a... Um, you simply see her coming out while talking to, her, to an aide. She is in her 40s, um, solidly built woman, a hair in a bit of dirty blonde hair in a bun, um, worry line crease face, obviously very busy. And um, she's just coming in, in fact, with an aide, um, because she has a, um, a, a surgery, as it were, if you know what I mean. She, she meets constituents who need help with stuff to do with the with financial elements. So essentially, from reading the the, the laminated paper on the notice board, because there's a notice board here, all this sort of council stuff, from things for the local community centre, uh, fundraisers, um, notices of planning permission uh, um, applications, and on that is the uh, um, Hatchet's surgery things, is where uh, basically a couple of days a week she comes in in the morning and listens to constituents who are having problems getting their benefits or dealing with council tax or stuff like that. And she tries mm. to help them by guiding them to the right bits of the Dorset Council to deal with that, essentially. Right. She's trying to be an intermediary to help her constituents um, deal with the, the bullshit that they get from trying to tackle bureaucracy when it's too much. And unlike a lot of the people who live out in the farms, well, some of the people who live out in the farms need that help because they just don't really know much about this kind of shit, although lots of them are rich enough not to care. But plenty of people in Gleesham need that help because they're not very rich. And they're mm -hmm. precisely the people who bureaucracy casually shits on because it can. Uh, and, you know, so they, they, they get uh, they need the help of someone in a slightly better position. And she appears to be the councilwoman who's taken it on her shoulders to provide this service to her constituents. OK. So if you want to use Nowhere to Run, you can. I am going to use Nowhere to Run. So I get a general idea of like. Uh places that she considers safe and with a turn of scrutiny i can identify hold, hold on in, in light of that information in light of that information i'm questioning how much actual power she has versus am i coming in now in light of the new information i'm questioning i'm questioning how much power she actually has she seems more like an intermediary to the people who actually matter here so i think you're probably better off finding our actual target right we're looking for someone yeah. who controls the budget not somebody who teaches people how to get around the bureaucracy we want we want the heart of the beast here to stab at thee so um so uh all right i'm gonna approach this like this chris i'm gonna use slip away mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna hang out in in the building because i'm pretty much leaving no memories of my uh, trace around here and mm -hmm. I'm waiting until she like I'm gonna follow her until she goes to speak like to a boss or something like okay. someone higher up in her food chain in the town council there is no one higher up in the food chain oh, okay. um, she is one of the councillors there's a council mm -hmm. um, there, there, there's the mayor of Gleesham but it's more of a ceremonial position you know it's the okay. you dress up in your lovely old clothes and ring a bell at certain events stuff um in terms of higher up the food chain, it's the it's the Dorset Council, it's the County Council, it's the the okay. issue, and they aren't well here because this mm -hmm. is some town in the middle of Blackmore Vale, which isn't near the sort of the guts of that bureaucracy. Um, so while there are various, there are some public servants who work here in the offices. They are not the County Councillors. They are you know, in, in terms of in Gleesham, the power she is so one of the top. So who who do the taxes get paid to is, I guess, where I'm confused. They get paid to the county council. They get paid to the county, right. So we, we need to figure out 
Johnny needs leverage. to somehow figure out who we can leverage at the, the county. So, you know, basically, uh, even if you want to just approach her in good faith and just be like, oh, you know, I inherited this estate. We're worried about the tax. Like, who right. do we speak to there? And then she's like, this person. And then we hunt. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Johnny's going to have to be social, and I'm going to use one of the aspects of my Iraqa ability for this situation. <clears throat> Remember that your Iraqa ability is, is limited in how often you can use it. It's once per scene. It's once it's... per uh, session, rather. Okay, let's double check. If I use it now, if we get into combat, I can't do surprise motherfucker, however. <laughs> but... well, I, unfortunately, I don't think today's going to be a combat day. Yeah, I Probably can... Probably not, unless you just sort of kick off suddenly. Um... Oh, yeah, no, you're right, it's once per session. Yeah, which I've been known to do. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to use that ability where I can subtract minus two from the number of doors I need in social maneuvering. Yeah, okay. When I get a chance. So, uh, yep. in light of that, I'm probably not going to use slip away, because I kind of want her to remember me. Regardless. So you're basically going to attend the surgery as a new constituent. Yeah. Okay. Completely above board, you are legitimately being who you are. No dissent yeah. act involved right now. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he feels no, dirty. <laughs> uh, no, no deceit involved right now, actually. Surprisingly, for the Iraqa. No, but he wants to know who on the city council he want, He should get mm -hmm. in good with, pretty much. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you, you wait your turn in the waiting room, and you she called through to a nice little office, um, some pot plant in the corner, some stuff on the wall for awards for things, and uh, she's fine. Um, hello, um, I haven't seen you before. Uh, no, I'm new in town. Uh, actually, just recently inherited Kestrel Hall from uh, American uh, Accent. You must be the new owner at um at the old lady's place, yes? I am. Offers her uh, hand. I offer out my hand to her, I'm and still a hand. It, it, in, in the handshake, that's when I'm using the Iraqa ability to uh, subtract two doors off. Yeah. You you give a firm handshake that is somehow deeply reassuring about the kind of person you are. It's a complete <laughs> lie, but it feels deeply <laughs> reassuring. <laughs> um, she nods. I yeah, am... no, I'm, uh, yeah I'm, I'm still a hatchet. I'm one of the council. Uh, I'm on the council for the town. Um, uh, obviously, well, I was expecting I'd be, we'd be seeing you sooner or later, uh, but uh, I have to admit, I didn't expect to see someone like yourself at a surgery like this. I mean, you just come into what was it, like millions, that place. It is, and, um, you know, the taxes are going to be coming up in short order, and, uh, you know, I want to do various uh, projects around the property in order to get into a working condition, and, you know, I, I understand you're one of the people to talk to in addition, you know, um, you know, I'd like to get in good with the city council because I'm sure that will help that scenario. Yeah. But well, uh, that, unfortunately, I don't know anybody on the city council. That's that's um, the tax. That's wise. I mean, certainly, any planning permissions you want to make for work on the place will have to pass by us. Um, so, uh, and certainly, I mean, my understanding is the place is in a dreadful state after years of neglect. So, I, I imagine plenty of people on the town council will be happy to hear that Kestrel Hall might actually be. Um, Restored to some of its former glories, um, but um, but what can I? What, what specifically can I? Can I do for you this morning? I, I don't want to brush you off, but obviously there are other people waiting to see me. So if it's is it something to do with the the? You said the taxes. Uh, yeah, the taxes. I uh, you know potential options as to how I could go about paying that, and. Like I said, I, I also like to know ultimately who I'm going to be pleading my case to outside of just yourself. Oh, well, we obviously there'll be chances to meet the rest of the council at some point. I'm like, sure if there's anything put on, I'll, I'll see if I can get you an invitation to something some of the others will be attending, maybe. Um, that would be more than appreciated to have uh, an invitation. I, I, I do have to warn you, you know, people around here are... Some of them are a bit... Um, how to put it? I don't want to be rude, but some of them are going to look at may, may see you a bit as outside as an outsider. So you, for some of them, you may get a rather cold welcome. But from my point of view, you know, Gleesham is a town that's really fallen behind where it should be. Um, 
you know, we can really make this place into somewhere much more worthwhile for the people who live here today uh, without I, worrying. I would absolutely love to do that. And I feel like Kestrel Hall would be uh, a great opportunity to do so. Um, I just, you know, if I lose the property, I don't feel like anybody who would potentially come and develop it would honor its history or its legacy. Hmm. Do you're afraid you're going to lose it? At the moment, like I said, uh, see, are, are you? Uh, is it is it the costs of the place? That, are you saying the taxes? Uh, yeah, the taxes. Absolutely. Mm. I was wondering if potentially there could be some sort of an extension. Well, because you've inherited it, my understanding is you need to talk to a lawyer, of course. But my understanding is there are um, provisions for um, delayed payment okay. on that kind of thing. Um, obviously, the, the council tax and like on the place, I imagine, will be quite expensive because it's a big property and a lot of land. Um, mm. But, um, I mean, there are provisions that can be made based on the use of the land. For example, uh, my understanding is it used to be it used to house a number of cottages. Um, that is correct. There was, of, there was a bit of scandal back in the day about that. And obviously, not used, if you're planning to rent them out again, that would go some way towards um, dispersing, defraying the, the costs. The, count, the tax um, costs in that respect. But question: Would you happen to have records of who was previously renting those cottages? I um, feel like I feel like trying to get families that used to live there would go a long way in pleading my case to the council. I would have. We obviously, um, uh, due to personal information protection, data protection, um, the answer is possibly yes. I would need their permission, but I can look into that if you want. Uh, that would be most helpful, actually. Okay, well, um, if you can give me a... Push this up, pad over. Give me a phone number. Obviously, we have the address, but if you give me a phone number, I can look into it and see if any of them are willing to talk to you. Uh, yeah, I write down my phone number, contact information. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad I can help with that. Uh, hopefully, some of them are willing to talk to you. Maybe, yes, maybe talk about um, taking up their residences once again. Um, beyond that, I mean, let's visit a state like that if you can get it up and running, the, the 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 you should be able to make enough income to trivially uh, afford things like the council tax. That's going to be the least of your worries compared to the rest of the running costs and the maintenance and fixing the place up. I would imagine. Obviously, I'm not an estate specialist, so I don't know for sure. But, do you know um, any estate managers? Do. Yes. Well, no. I know. Well, I know someone who works a lot with that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> pushes a card across to you. Uh, yes. Excuse me, some of these, and it says on it. Uh, architecture, Estates and Properties Hawkhurst <laughs> Son of a bitch, he's back <laughs> There's always a sting in the tail I was waiting until he was going to come up again and, uh, Does he handle accounting as well or just the state management? Oh, I, don't, I don't think so, I mean, I imagine he has an accountant but I don't think he handles it per se Got it. Something we'll have to look into. Well, um, I said I don't mean to brush you off, but I will need to see my next constituent now. But thank you for coming and seeing me. I hope this has been of use to you. Um, more than enough, thank you. Uh, before I leave, does she have like an open window? Yes. Uh, I'm not doing like jumping out a window. Uh, <laughs> Johnny, Johnny's basically <laughs> just going to um. Once he's done here, he's gonna like just come around the outside and listen into conversations and try to see if he can get a, a council member's name. Okay, give me wits plus perception. <clears throat> plus one in human. Yep. I actually picked up physical dice to roll. <laughs> I want this one to succeed too, so I'm going to throw a willpower on it. Two successes. Okay. God damn it, one success short. So you go around and you listen in, um, a casually leaning against the building. It's just four up, but even you know, with the slightly enhanced senses, even in human form, you can pick up what she's saying. Um, so she talks to someone, some other guys come in who is having problems getting his housing benefit paid for, uh, delivered. The council of contesting it. She said, "Well, here's a cut. Phone this number. Don't get. Don't listen to their bullshit when they try and say, oh, we can't help you. Do this.' And basically giving them the, you know, the kind of the guide to how to put the pressure on some of the people to get." through to people who will actually fucking listen to you rather than just fob you off after that um however there's obviously she doesn't have any, no one in there and she um 
uh, she rings up. She rings up. And says, um, "Hi, is that is that? Uh, yes, can I speak to Mr. Hawkehurst, please?" And then, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, hi, Corley. Yes, no, it's Stella. Um, I just had a chap in. Do you ever believe this? this is one of the Amer- this American chap who's inherited the um, the Kestrel Hall. Um, he seems to be looking for something to do with estates management, I think. I, mean, I think it's quite a big project to tackle. So I just point him, and you hear her talking to him, and she seems basically saying that she's pointed you in his direction, so just be aware that this guy might come looking because they, they, they might need that help, and hopefully that you he can help you out kind of thing. Perfectly normal. Um, it sounds like she then just talks to another guy, and then she finishes her surgery. And then there's the, the noise, there's the sound of um, someone else coming in, and you get... A silence that is somehow frosty, even though you can't see what the hell's going on in the room. And um, and then a man speaks, uh, a different voice, not a man you've you've heard before. Um, he, he says some, says something dismissive about the surgery. Like, oh yes, well, I see you're helping out all the the ingrates again, Stella. You got you should be spending your time on more important pursuits for the town. And she says, um, Cornelius, helping out the constituents is important. He, What's his name? Um, Cornelius he waves. Cornelius, away. look. Glisham isn't going to do, you know, gl- nothing. Gl- Glisham is not becoming a place of wealth, of wealth and influence off the back of, of poor people claiming benefits and scrounges. It's going to become off wealthy off the back of entrepreneurs and people with money who wish, wish, wish to attack to this channel. Now, have you yet signed off on the plan I've been putting forward to you? And she's like, she sort of fob him off with the. Uh, um, and he goes, oh, and, and someone said, the, one of the Americans, the people who have picked up the Kestrel Hall come in there. So, um, what did they say to you? And she said, well, they're worried about tax and things like that. And he's, oh, oh, that's a shame. I was hoping there'd be someone with real money bringing some class to this town. I mean, Americans, of course. You have to take what you can get, but I thought... All right, maybe... I'm, I'm totally on board with your plan right now to terrorize this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and he basically talks dismissively about and, um, and pesters her about things and eventually she shoes him away. Uh, he appears to be one of the other council members um, uh, and she, they clearly do not get on massively but have to work together. So... All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We see haven't. If I can get we time. haven't. We haven't found our white white whale yet. I, yeah. I think he can lead towards it, so I'm gonna try to get eyes on him. Uh, yes. I'm gonna use fading. Yep. And make a stealth roll into the building. Like okay. I'm walking in normally, but I'm just trying to look. Um... You're trying to position yourself so you catch him as he comes out in the corridor to get. Yeah, him. exactly. Yep. Give me a dex plus stealth roll. To try and pull it off without, you know, being noticeable to him. Uh, technically, am I stalking him? Can I use that specialty? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that's. Uh... Let me see. I have dexterity three, stealth four. That makes eight dice with my specialty. Fading boosts me up to ten. Oh, seven successes! Wow. Okay. Nice. You you're basically you position yourself um, uh, like you are just casually leaning against a wall, and literally no one paying any attention to you whatsoever. At the moment when um, and I'm drinking my uh, cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, as as you catch him. So first off, you can get a clear view on him as he shambles off down the corridor. There will be some extra benefits from exceptional as well, which we'll get to in a moment. So, are you planning to know where to run him? Yep. Okay, give me the roll for that. Two successes. Okay. So, um, yes, you ID his safe place. He has a house in uh, with a safe place dot in Handley, the richer part of town. You know where it is. Um, he has another location he considers a bolt hole. You get the name. It is... Uh, let me find it on here. Um, uh, okay. Where is Where do I put this character? Uh, this is why I need to organize my notes again. Right. Um, the VIP Amber Club... And you know where it is. It's not anywhere near here. It's um, off to the west. It's it's on the edge of Dorset, where Dorset meets Somerset. Um, and just over the border in Somerset, there's a town called Yeovil. And on the edge of Yeovil, there's a village called Mudford. And in Mudford is the Amber VIP Club. And she, he considers that a, a bolt hole. Yeah. A mud, mud bolt? Sorry. Mud, Mudford. Mudford. Yep. The Amber VIP Club. Um as well as that, as you're sort of thinking, you know, he, he comes out muttering something to himself, going, oh, I better have to... Oh, I better have something good to show 
Corley by the end of the month. He says, mutters himself. So he mentions Hawkehurst and the kind of. He doesn't know anyone's there, and he looks slightly resigned. St he's staring blankly at one of them. No, but I have something good to show Hawkehurst by the end of the month, or I'll be in trouble. And wonders, you know, wanders off. Subservient. His tone and voice is. Oh, you cut out. I'm sorry. His tone and voice is that he is subservient to and scared of Hawkehurst. It's not the same reaction like Stella was like, oh, he's some guy who does estates. I'll ring him up and let him know as a favor. This guy's relationship to Hawkehurst is is different. Yeah, like he knows him. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is anything else you want to do in, in, in Galloway House? Uh, We're rolling back to the back. Did we ever actually meet Hawkehurst? No. no, not yet. No, look, you've seen him briefly while staring I, through time. And right, I know he's either Wolf or I know he's either Uralpha or Wolf One. <laughs> yes, something different. <laughs> All right, I feel like I've got enough information right now that I can share with the pack. Okay. So, I'm so it's probably taking you a day or two to have found Galloway and, and positioned yourself to have. The, and um, so yeah, the pack can have a, a de debrief together while you know you and general stuff is continuing on. You know, you're working on the glass raven. You're working. Everyone's clean, cleaning up the place. Generally, getting things more functional. Um, Mary is settling in more and has started to produce itemized lists. Lists are appearing round the place. Lists pinned to things with a disturbing <clears throat> amount of organization behind them. There's a list on the fridge saying one basically one of you fuckers needs to go and buy certain things at certain <laughs> times. There's a, list, uh, there's a list on one of the drawers saying you need some extra tools to fix stuff. There's a list of her saying, I have been looking through the paperwork. Here are the listed building items of things that you absolutely cannot fucking break in this place or you will be in deep shit. Like, you know, and did you know that the, the, the that Rondell, that, um, did you know that the folly was was created by some British, uh, o British Ottoman noblewoman or something and is really famous and it's buried in fucking nettles? You know, uh, uh, and, and things is like that. Is that the place she's... I'm cleaning up? No, that's the lake. Um, but she's, oh, okay. she's obviously spending some time researching stuff in her spare time. And, um, these these lists and notes are breeding and prolif proliferating around the place because um, some stuff she's fiddling around with herself and then some stuff she doesn't have the time to or doesn't can't be bothered to so you get you find things like instructions for one of you to oil the fucking hinges on one of the back doors because it's rusted and creaky as fuck you know um you don't see her very much because she's off at work but when she but other times she's obviously here noting planning scheming and writing notes um so yeah you can have your Pack debrief as to how you want to tackle things with uh, uh, with um, with Corny Mr. Cornish, and you've got a surname as well, um, just by looking at stuff. His surname is Cornelius Stornway. And a little bit Stornway. of research shows you he Stornway. He is a rich guy, um, and one of the sort of the front men of the town council. You know, he's the guy who will make sure he's the bloke giving away awards <laughs> on open supermarkets and shit like that. Sure. All right, so before the debrief starts, um, glancing around at all the lists, if this doesn't scream future Elodoff, I don't know what does. Um, Thornbreaker takes the uh, the note that says, please oil the creaking door, and he, he neatly folds it in four and puts it on the table, and then he takes his cup of coffee and he places it on it like a coaster and leans back in the chair. <clears throat> So, I think the target of this hunt should be this Cornelius Stoneway guy. He's, uh, he knows Hawkehurst personally. And it's not like a scenario where it's like, oh, I know a guy. It's like, he knows him and, like, if I don't do shit for him, he's going to break my legs. Were you able to I figure don't. out who's in charge of the finances for the county? So, he's... Sorry, so carry on. I was going to say that uh, Johnny feels that no, but he feels that Cornelius might have pull with that guy. So, But if I found out more information by digging, absolutely. After talking about digging onto it, you basically found that the, the Dorset county council that deals with a lot of the, the council tax is... Um, 
you know, it's it's an office somewhere in like Bournemouth mostly, and the people who deal with it are a bunch of regular Joe civil servants. The the decisions on it are not made higher, with the caveat that potentially people with enough influence or people might be able to push down on them. But what you're but the people who are making so the people who are making decisions on that are not gonna be any like individual high ups, but they might well be able to influence them. Um and in that respect you need to find so there, there is no one on a page saying this guy is the bloke sure. to influence if you want sure. to not have to pay your tax but obviously companies that come in with sweet business deals and stuff they there must be someone who pulls the things there and it looks like it's you know various influential politicians are probably ones to talk to um someone like cornelius is probably not a bad shot um stella is trying to help a bunch of people deal with a bureaucracy that isn't always very friendly to individual human beings this guy is much more concerned about affluence money and prosperity he doesn't care about the little guy. He cares about people who have, for instance, inherited five million dollar by million pound estates. You know. Um. Okay. <clears throat> Thor Thornbreaker seems grumpy by the fact that it's not a clear cut answer. He also disdains um, human bureaucracy yeah. and and uh, he, he's. He spent his life before he was in Aratha avoiding human bullshit. Oh, I said he, he spent, spent his life he spent his life before he became in Aratha living in the mountains to avoid human bullshit. So <laughs> he has absolutely zero tolerance now that he's found out there's a bigger world behind all that. He could care less. He wants an easy solution. Show me what I can bring down like an animal. I'm a hunter. I don't like this. Let's talk it out. Pay our bills. Bullshit. This is our territory. Come take it from me, you bastards. <laughs> So after Thornbreaker's had his rant about bureaucracy, <laughs> bullshit, and humans at the table, <laughs> and once he's let it out, uh, you know, he uses he uses the uh, the folded up list to clean up the coffee he spilled all over the table. <laughs> Throws the sopping wet piece in the garbage. Of lists. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh. And then he he settles down and and lets them talk. <laughs> okay. So, I'm gonna be honest. Jack is only half paying attention because bureaucracy bores him. <laughs> so we have a target. I think he's a good preliminary target. I know two places he likes to hide out. I know where. He his home is, and he's got like a VIP room at this place called the, the VIP Amber Club. Or is it just called the Amber Club? It's called the or Amber Club, but VIP is... Well, it, yeah. It's in... yeah, so... Hey. Personally, I think the seedier things are going to be found out at the Amber Club. Yeah, that is a bit of a trip, but on the other hand... You know, you can pop in a car and drive there. It's not the end of the world. Can, can call I heard river. something. I, I vaguely recall you saying something about Hawker, Hawkshurst or Hawkers. Hawkhurst is the estate manager I was recommended, and this Cornelius guy seems to uh, pay heed to him. It's the best way I can put it. I overheard him muttering to himself, saying that he better have something good to show Hawkhurst. So maybe if we can get him, maybe if we can get this Cornelius guy on board with what we want to do, whether either through honey or just pure good old fashioned wrath and intimidation, <clears throat> that might make Hawkers more lenient towards working with us. I also wanted to find out who. Um, who was evicted from these cottages X years ago. They might be people we want to bring back in. They might be wolf-blooded families or something that we can watch out for and cultivate. I'm not saying willy-nilly bring them in, but again, these are people we should maybe vest into first to see and then work from there. And again, that's income for the land and then other things. Are the pack going to make any decisions at this meeting, then? 
is there, is there a plan to to call a hunt on Cornelius or something like that? No, I don't, I don't know that Cornelius is the right target. I I think um, Hawkehurst <clears throat> is the next move. I think. Yeah, we need more, we need to know more about him before we can do yeah. anything. Okay. I think knowing about Hawkehurst will probably let us formulate another plan. Because if we can if we can get buddy buddy with Hawkehurst then it becomes a little easier to, to kind of lean on Cornelius. Yeah, that's not a bad plan. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do then is, again, well, assuming... Well, you're guys... on board with us, you know, renovating and, and bringing this, the estate back so that it does become an income property. And I, I feel like uh, Hawkehurst is better, navi better able to navigate and doing that kind of stuff, especially if you want to redecorate Kestrel Hall with raven symbols over hawk symbols. <laughs> well, so what I'm going to do is, um, again, assuming on an ongoing basis your main projects at the moment are things like cleaning the gardens, clearing up debris, mm. trying to renovate, working on the glasswork, getting driving lessons, trying to build links. And there are a couple things to point out. But, but what I'm going to do is we're going to shift now to the uh, scenes with the uh, people, basically the inheritance stuff because it's going to be relevant. Um, and um, and I'm also assuming you are now also trying to look into Hawkehurst and trying to find out some information there. But the first thing we're going to do, because it'll be the next day essentially, is from where you were at, is, is people turn up to pick up their stuff. And that's going to be relevant because, for instance, Jonathan Dunstan is one of the people who has to come and pick up something from that. So, um, firstly, everyone, remember you, you regain up to three willpower because three days have passed. If you have aggravated damage, uh, there's at least four days since the aggravated damage source, so everyone will heal at least one point of ag damage as well. All right, I'm still working to heal off one. Yeah, you got pretty grim, grimmer pretty chewed you up pretty bad, but it's still, you know, it's starting to pass on. Um, um, and apart from any other small scenes, there might be a little bit more than that today, depending on how these scenes go, but there might be, then there'll be a gap of a few days after that to cover a few more bits before the actual, the, the meat, the hunt meat, okay? So... I'm, I'm not going to lie, um, and, and boys, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys kind of make a decision on this one, but Jack really wants to use uh, Heavens Unleashed when Jonathan's coming, just to make him miserable. He might like just it. We don't, we don't know him. enough about him. On, on well, that note. So, well, no, so the thing is, we're, our pack name is the Oncoming Storm, and I just want to... It's, it's an That's intimidation fair. factor. That's fair. It's calling the storm... When he's coming and and being like you stepped onto my territory, take and, and then he lets it go and Jonathan leaves. <laughs> like I'm done with this. You you were saying like, like, basically like take your shit and go. Everyone um, has had the time to get essence back up to full over those three days thinking about it because the locusts will be rethink. So you can all have full essence, which means you can also have the essence needed to pull off bullshit tricks like that, Maureen. <laughs> right, and that's why I want to do it because I know I'll have I'll have a day extra where I can I can pull off pull back the five essence I have to burn yeah. to, to use it. I, I, just like, I just like how Chris likes this enough to remind us of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. Fuck it. Okay, so, um, are, you, are you doing it um, basically only when he turns up? Are you firing it up? Or are you firing it up earlier in the day when you know people are turning up in general? So, I, one second. I want to double check what the actual... Okay, while you... Check, <coughs> um, um, how long is... So... All right, so it's a minimum. So it looks like it's a minimum of a ten-hour storm. Uh, well, be. I'm just I'm reading it here. It's uh, Howl of the Heavens is answered by Rolling Thunder and a Rage of the Storm. Cost five essence. Dice pool present survival and glory. Action extended ten successes. Each roll represents one minute. Duration is one hour per success. Yes, so it'll be minimum ten. Okay. You can carry on pumping into it if you want in that case you can keep on doing it to try and get right. more successes that said you you can't stop it once you fired it up right so, so you might not uh, want to go like i will get a million successes and storm forever i was thinking complete intimidation factor like when when jonathan shows up he's gonna okay. be standing outside with an axe splitting wood in the middle of a storm and okay so you probably you know, want to fire a big, like a big call out moment <laughs> You want to fire it up before he gets there, then, probably, because otherwise you can't yeah. be appropriately posed. You know, shirt, short sleeve shirt, glistening muscles in the rain, hammering with your axe. You've got to be there when he turns up to pull it off, right? You can't be... <laughs> All the then come out. Okay, right. so it would start out as a quite a nice, clear day, spring day. Um, the day... 
Quick. Tong turns up oh. early to oversee. You're coming in and out. Okay, Tongham turns up for early to oversee and say, like, here's a deal. He sees that Johnny's got a lot of the stuff and remembers, oh, that's, you know, that's very thoughtful of you getting this stuff together. You know, most of the stuff is, is needed is there. And people will turn up, you know, we've got, it should be mostly in the next couple of hours. And we, uh, people should be turned up from 11 till 1 o'clock is when I've told people to come. And everyone is, is, is approved, so they'll come. So, you know, obviously latecomers, you don't need to, if they turn up, it's inconvenient for you. You don't need to see them. We can arrange for another day. So, in the prelude to that, then, are people turning up to oh, figure wow. stuff up. So it takes me a total of, hold on, i got to count my rolls because it's a minute per roll. Oh, I saw an exception uh, one, there. two, three, the end. four, five, six, seven, eight, eight total minutes to do it. Yep. And I ended up with one exceptional uh, success roll in there. Uh, yep. A total of 13 hour storm. Okay, so you go out onto the sky to the clear, little patchy bits of cloud, but otherwise quite clear, pleasant skies, and you stand there and you feel, and how obviously how Stormbringer does it, I don't know exactly, but you draw in the essence within you, let it out, and feel that connection with the weather, and like oh. your breath connects to the breath of the wind, and it's a sense of breathing with it long enough until you feel the wet in, in your lungs of the rain and the spark of the thunder in your veins and then you pull it in but, you know, is, is the, how you channel it to it now, I don't know how he whether he howls or he does anything you know, dance or anything like that but that, the, sort of the, fun, the mechanics of it is how you connect your essence to the wider world and command mm. that essence as if it was your breath and your body to draw in this storm um, and uh, yeah as you finish Rain starts. It's, to spot like, you know, it's most likely going to be like a, there's a, an old grain sack hanging mm -hmm. that he basically beats the snot out of. Mm -hmm. Captain out of. America in the last shot. Yeah. And as he, as, he, right, as he hits it, the storm grows more and more, and then the last shot is a crack of thunder, a flash of lightning, and the heavens yeah. open up. You're, you're pummeling away. You breathe. The rain starts to spot around you, and you thump, thump, and you stop. You give it that final thump, and you hear distant rumble of thunder as the storm approaches. So, firstly, a um, uh, the torrential downpour begins uh, and then a little crack of uh, black clouds on the horizon, swiftly blown by a fresh breeze, roll across the sky. It's not so fast as to be blatantly supernatural, but it is a surprising turn in the weather for what looked and was meteorologically predicted to be a nice clear day. And it starts to cascade down. Um, so, they're suffering a penalty to speed initiative equal. Everyone has speed initiative penalty equal to glory renown. Even you at the moment, because you don't have under their own skies. Right. I think. But specifically, yeah, there's penalties on the use of allies, contacts, retainers, staff, and status merits to aid, get aid or help. So if anyone gets their vehicle stuck trying to get here, they'll be like, <laughs> and the air going, no fucking mate, geezer, we're not coming out there in this weather. <laughs> and it's very atmospheric. You know, it's very like you feel the power, and for you personally. It is, an exp it is an expression and extension of your inner power. You did this, <coughs> nothing more than what is inside you. You literally changed the weather and made a storm. This is yours. You're on your turf in your weather. You can sense there is more to this gift that is carved in your essence, and you can't quite grasp it. That sense that you could become so much it, and it's so much you, you would simply be unaffected, and you could make your pack unaffected. You know that facet exists as a discrete thing. You just haven't quite the strength to take it yet. Okay. But it, Without that, it's a pretty good feeling. People start to come. Some of them um, are family members. Quick, Chris, because I did yeah. call the storm. Um, what it would it be? It would be presence and expression. Yes, yes. You need to howl so, to, to get to sing. So my deal. Two successes. Nice, nice. You give a you give a fulsome howl before people turn up, and while there is no immediate reaction. Again, that sense that you are in the right place and that this storm is yours grows stronger. Like, there is no discomfort in this weather at all. You should be getting pissed off, wet, and annoyed, but it just doesn't feel bad. You're soaked to your bone, and it feels fine. You get right. in the action, you're like, fucking hell, chopping wood. I could chop some people up. This is rad, you know. <laughs> now, um, People start trickling. Some of them are, yeah, you know, they greet. Presumably, I'm guessing Johnny's going to greet them at the entrance as they roll up the drive and park up. You know, the rain hammering down on cars. Um, they, yeah, you know, they have people hurry up, get umbrellas up. They hurry. Yeah, I, I don't hurry. hire a valet for them. No, well, well, uh, yes. Um, they, they, there's a case of people hurrying as quickly into the drive as they can due to this un sudden, unexpected downpour. Um, 
Some the weather we're having. Yes, yes, and there's that indication of, wow, this weather. British people love talking about the weather, but this is actually worth talking about. Like, where the hell... This wasn't what was on the, the weather forecast. Um, some of them are minor or family members or obviously associates of some mm. kind who have got something minor will. And you show them in, so you've, you've taken over what was once a dining room near the entranceway, which is a big grand room. The plaster work on the ceiling is this early 1700s beautiful work. It, the room severely needs dusting and it needs some nice furniture. There's one big old table in here that's been left and you've sort of laid stuff out on it. But people are kind of going, wow, this place is actually, you know, now this place has actually been had some people. Oh, uh, you can help. Um, the place feels slightly more alive now it's had people living in it. So despite the sparseness of the signs of life here, there's a sense of pe people coming in aren't upset by or thinking, oh, it's, it's dilapidated. It's bare in here, but it's a beautiful room. And a lot of people notice, wow, look at this. Look at this decoration. Look at this place you live in. You know, and, and a few will ask you, are you planning to stay? Are you planning to decorate it and things? There are a few people of more note who come. I am, and I'm trying to do some wheeling and dealing and, like, in a way. One of them is Simon Sykes Caldwell, the chap who's here for the horses. They roll up in the drive mm. with a couple of horse boxes, and he comes out. Smiles at you. He's in a, in a way to Mac. Goes, Terribly unseasonable weather we're having. Walks over. He gives that smile because again, he you met him at the funeral and you weren't hostile, but you weren't best buds either per se. And uh, um, so, um, Simon, I have a question for you. I know you're picking up the horses, and I was wondering if you'd be uh, interested in a joint adventure, perhaps. Um, Perhaps we leave the horses. They belong to you, absolutely. But we uh, establish some sort of, um, you know, uh, like a stable where we can have the kids come and learn to ride horses. So, uh, on the second point, so you're thinking of maintaining or, or expand, maintaining the the state um, Clarice's old stables, are you? I, I'll be honest, she let them not exactly go to waste, but the old girl has her interested in horses, but she never really took them to their full potential. You know, a lot of the old stable house is essentially unused. Um, if you're if you're suggesting renovating the stables and, and making a business of them, there I am. Well, I won't say I'm not interested. Um, I'm surprised <coughs> but after our, after our chat at the uh, at the at the old lady's the old girl's funeral. Um, maybe I misjudged you a little. Yeah, I have to forgive me. I was on edge. I was oh, maybe, around maybe family right. didn't seem didn't seem to like me much. I think that's something maybe we should talk about. Um, the hmm. Maybe that's something we should talk about in the future. I, I, not a matter for a rainy day like today, and I, you've got... Oh, absolutely, to like... absolutely not today, but perhaps over a pint or a... Yes. Yes, maybe. Now, the first matter, the horses themselves. Um, now, I was due to pick up all four horses. Um, yep. While I would be delighted to leave them to you for the running cost, the truth is that Wrexham and Black Vale Yonder, to the, the uh, two of the horses, are ones that... Um, I had specifically arranged with uh, Clarice about um, picking up because we have them scheduled in. For so, some... like, Johnny wasn't implying that he leaves them here now. Like, mm -hmm. he understands that he's here for the horses and to take mm -hmm. them away, but he's talking, like, in the future, bringing the horses back and running a stable. Like, that was his intention. Mm -hmm. I... Where they, where the horses still belong to him, but, like, but we split the co we split the profits of, you know, doing this, like, because we have them here in the states, where you know, like these these horses have places to be at the moment, um, and I'm not sure whether I would, you know, we have places in for for a very exclusive stable ready to take them at the moment. Um, costs a lot of money, but I'm not saying these horses, but uh, future horses. In the long run, um, uh, Johnny, may I call you Johnny? Um, is that yeah, J Johnny to my friends. In the long run, Johnny. It's possible we could see something through it. We'd need to talk about pl what your plans for these stables are and figure out if there's something, you know, something we can go into together there. Um, but I can't promise anything. Uh, for now, these unfortunately, these horses have places to be at the moment, so I'd better get them going. Right? Absolutely. Okay. 
And he you, you just oversee as he takes the his people round and they get horse boxes and Tara and um Jenny watch the horses getting loaded up. Um the two your two people are Tara and uh, so Tara watching is um again, she's very this is a woman who's always very not giving trying not to give out signals. She's very repressed in some way. She's tamping down on something. Um and she watches there's a bit of sorrow in her eyes as she sees the horses go but that's all jenny's probably like mix of downcast because she's seeing these animals going um well not downcast about the two claimed ones because she obviously didn't get on well with them but the other two she's really sad to see going um combined with her and she says you know she looks to as they're going so i mean the horses are going um obviously there's not gonna be we'll come around tomorrow and you know tidy up the stables and everything i'm if, gonna if, I'm sending a text to Thornbreaker because I'm assuming he's separated from me, but I, I'm basically like, you know, I kind of put the idea in Simon uh, Simmons' head to try mm -hmm. to bring back the horses to to do something with yeah. them. So. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and Jenny says to you, well, you know, obviously we'll come in tomorrow and do the final tidying. Um, if you do get more horses in, because um, um, Bill was talking about maybe the st Bill and Jack they said the stables might continue. If you do get more horses in, please, you know, um, keep me in mind. I, I do really enjoy working with them. Uh, I'm assuming we're we're sort of milling about. Um, yeah, you can turn up if you want to. Yeah. Least. So. Um, Bill's going to approach Jenny and actually say. Um, there's still the matter of the dog. Oh, we're okay. we're out of the uh, the house a lot. Maybe you could come by twice a day to. Oh yeah, I could walk a gripper and stuff like that. I can look after him if you want. I would appreciate that. I think he's. I don't know where he is. I think he's gone and he's hiding in the kennel at the moment with this downpour. You know, the thunder. He doesn't like thunder very that much. Um, crackle. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, and she's not seized on almost like a lifeline. Yeah, no, I'll totally come and walk the dog for you, Mr. Galloway. I'll look after her again uh, for you. Th that is Bill. I mean, oh, oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. Sure, Bill. Very much appreciate Sure. Okay, okay. Um, Tara, meanwhile, it, it, Tara was like, well, you know, it's been, um, I had a, it was a pleasure working for your, um, for your great aunt. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I guess if you, if you do open up stables, there's plenty of people around here with interest in horses. Um, so, yeah, well, we'll tidy up tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, she, she seems less... Well, something's going on with her, but it's very hard to put your finger on what still. I, I spoke to Simmons, and he's not opposed to uh, bring some of the horses back in a joint business venture, so hopefully... She looks a bit out. like... Sim uh, she looks like she's about to say she thinks Simmons is an asshole, but doesn't say it. Like stops herself saying it because you know he's your relative. Well, okay. Well, that, then that could be something. That could be good. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get in out of the, now. They're taking the horses. I'm going to get out of this rain. Okay. We'll get in the stables. And, come on, uh, Jenny. Let's get those. Um, let's get the muck cleared up. No, might as well do it now. It's fresh. Um. Uh, okay. I I separately when he has a free moment I separately approach Johnny and say. I don't know if Simon is the uh, right the best person. option to do this, but maybe you can make an offer for Tara. Give her a cut of the uh, income. Profit. Yeah. yeah. No, that would be. That's not a bad idea. That As we I first have to establish this business venture. He knows. No. As the fine as the horses are loaded on and the storm is making the horses the two natural horses quite jittery, the two claimed horses are dead calm despite the thunder, and they are and as they are loaded on, you know where the stable hands where the hands working on them can't uh, not at the right angle to see, like eyes ripple open on their flanks as the two claimed watch the nearby werewolves carefully in a kind of are they going to kick off or not <laughs> they don't, the claim don't do anything uh, and they seem satisfied they're, they're loaded on completely um, obediently into I uh, I stare back at them and I do one of the uh, and I just do a stare down like if you try anything fucking wherever you're going we're going to find out and we're going to kick your asses there is a uh, yes a brief stare down with these eyes where they should not be and, and the horses are away and uh, I'm I'm actually going to make that roll. I, okay. 
persuasion, no, no, uh, presence plus intimidation, I think. Yep, and intimidation does not work right now because it it doesn't apply for hunting ground, right? No. Okay. That's for sure. <laughs> right? 7d10. Because I'm going to willpower this. Uh, one success. <clears throat> okay. You stare. You think you get the message across. It's hard to tell whether they are taking it seriously because they're horses looking out their flanks with eyes that should not be there. Um, but you feel they have got the message. They won't have an excuse, as it were. <laughs> That's basically it. If they do anything, Johnny is reserving the right to call Sister Don on their asses. Stormbringer. You're chopping wood. Chopping wood feels good. Every time the thunder cracks when hit wood, it feels particularly good. Jonathan <laughs> turns up um, at the same time as some other as some other people come to pick some stuff up, some furniture, a couple of other distant cousins. They roll in the vehicle, and, and, and then you see um, a solid, expensive, high-end brand Land Rover kind of vehicle come up, and you see in the window Dunstan, and you're there. As he comes out, you know, he stops the car, opens it, looks around, looks up at the storm in a kind of this is so, this is clearly is that intimidation roll? when he when he gets there. No. That's this is part of my intimidation role. And only because I'm not a hundred percent sure how it all kind of will work. Would four successes be enough to in Dalu form grab the next piece of wood? stare at him and rip it in half myself um if you flip to Dalu, if you wait till humans are just out of view to dalu which is fine and then you yeah. rip it um because i can shift reflexively between the two i'd give you three successes to rip it in half okay because i rolled I, I i threw willpower on it just to make sure i wouldn't okay. miss okay and so i rolled four successes so so he gets out he looks up at the rain he's wearing a waistcoat and you know nice coat and heavy overcoat Looks up in the rain, a kind of this is clearly bullshit kind of way. <laughs> right. Sees you there as you've just shifted, as the humans in front of him who've just got to talk to Johnny and Marcus at the entrance, they're just out of sight as you've shifted to add an extra foot and quite a few pounds. Pick up this piece of wood and just go, <laughs> rip it. Now, he flinches when you do that. <laughs> With that, I was going to ask you what sort of. Are there any. Would there be any circumstance bonuses for. And it's, it's not a like I'm trying to be overly imposing it's the fact that all hell is breaking loose around him and Jack is dead calm I'm about the whole thing going to give so I was you... thinking composure and intimidation because of everything that's going around and the fact that he's hyper focused on it that's fine you can do composure plus intimidation intimidation I will give you a plus one circumstance bonus for ripping a piece of wood into pieces and I will give you a plus one bonus for the storm as well um, mm -hmm. plus two because you exceptional that actually so I'll give you plus three dice on the roll Fantastic. Go piss in his Cheerios. <laughs> Five successes intimidation roll. <laughs> okay. but as it rips, he just he gives them that cold your next kind of look and rips it in half. He he you see him he doesn't quite jump jump in when you rip it, but he could, he there's a there's a a reaction, a physical reaction when he sees you do that and it's like he he stares at you, trying to maintain his composure, but you can see you've you've needled him really well he's not panicking or scared but you've just got you've got him in a pop, you've really jabbed him you know you've really got to him and he just tries to make it, he spends a moment just staring at you as the rain is pouring down on him and trying to like just keep himself together and the market is ah mr dunstan and he's forced to tear his attention away from you and plaster on a very fake smile and you know shake his he has to sort of shake his attention back to focus on this guy um, you've you've won a mind game with him here very thoroughly, and this is gonna stick with him. You've really can I? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna build on this. So when he turns his attention, I'm gonna shake Jonathan's hand and then just like pull him in really close. And I was like, you shouldn't turn your attention away from your hunters. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should you shouldn't turn your back on the one who wants to rip you in half, <laughs> Mr. Tongham, Mr. Galloway. I won't take much of your time. I'm just here to pick up as as due. He looks around the house. He's trying. 
Now, you think he probably planned to come in here and put you down with a bunch of comments and be like, all oh, smart ass and haha, that isn't it suck to be funny American? So he's he's completely kind of wrong footed by this. And so instead, he just sullenly shuts up. <laughs> as you go through the thing and there on the table is this, this glass flower in a little glo globe <coughs> and he takes it signs the thing with for, with Tong and say he's picked it up and it's all clear and he's done the thing easily and he looks at you and he's trying to think of something to put you down or to mock you for being forsaken in all places and he just he just ends up going good day and walks out because he just I, I kind of want to go pee on his car <laughs> so, I, mean, I, on his car I want to mark his car. I really do. Okay, he when he comes out, he smells, sniffs, looks like again tapping <laughs> down on the fury, gets in the car, slams the fucking door, <laughs> and for like there's a moment where he's trying to get his fucking keys and he comes so crop he can't find his fucking keys. And for a moment you'll go, is he just gonna death? Have you hit one of his trees? <laughs> fucking death raid in the Land Rover? It's like. <laughs> Table flip. <laughs> and he, um, like, he comes back out. I'm standing there checking the uh, the edge on the axe, staring at him. He glowers at you in pure rage. <laughs> the mask is completely gone, and he somehow you know, he eventually gets the fucking car working, stares, turns it jerkily with rage, and dri he drives in fury. He's not like crashing anything, but he just it's like you know the body language somehow transmits into the car. The car shows how angry he is as he drives away, and you think. You know that wow you have completely fucking he's gonna go away angry and next time he sees you if he isn't still thinking about it he's gonna go oh that fucking <laughs> motherfucking bastard <laughs> he's gonna be fucking livid so Just there's one thing Jack's good at it's getting under people's skin <laughs> You think it's probably a miracle he didn't at least soft rage and just go rip the steering wheel off and try and beat you to death with it. But um, <laughs> yeah, he drops, and Mr. Mr. Marcus Tongan watches him go and says to try and, ah, that's a, that, that, what an angry man. A very <laughs> angry man. I've never seen such a man so angry and I can't believe he does so well. <laughs> does he have a wife? I'd be worried for her. Um, um, and oh, I'm, I'm like saying this out loud. Ouch. <laughs> Uh, but, but, well, I understand. Yes, yes, he does. He's got quite a large family. But, uh, yes, well, mm. you know. <laughs> um, there is one other visitor of note who is um, uh, Delilah Gleesham, who was the matriarch you saw at the thing, the wolf blood, <clears throat> who had a not f exactly frosty, but somewhat standoff thing. She turns up to pick up a few things, including the painting of blood, essentially the red painting. Um, she comes in, you know, she. She um comes in to pick her stuff up. Most Jews says to says to um. Oh, I just like a quick word with uh, Mr. Galloway, if I may. Again, she's so she's this again matrophy, probably in her fifties. Um, oh. So there's like a private parlor type deal. I'll well, take her now. Step out. He says, I'll, I'll step out the dining room. You know. She's again in her fifties, aged very well. You're sure as well, right? Silver hair, but looks quite again regal or authority. <laughs> who radiates authority and at the. You know, a lot of people were sort of in her retinue, as it were, of the family. Um, she's picking things up. You know, uh, she, she's gathering stuff at the table. You are planning to stay, then? I am. I'd like to um, get this place up and running and bring it back to its former glory. She nods slowly. Well, I can't say I'm not disappointed because I would have liked the opportunity myself. <laughs> but... I hope you respect the she sort of gestures like the stuck of the plaster work, the the history of this place. If you can return it to its former glories rather than to making it something new, it's gaudy and uh, I'm not a big fan of gaudy myself. I uh, I think it loses some sort of a charm when you do that. And, uh, there's some changes in the interior decorations I'd like to make, but she nods and she's looking at you very measure piercingly and measuringly. It was a surprise to myself to find that there was even an American branch of the family. Um, you know, I think my um, my grandmother came over shortly after the war. Yes, I did a little research to the family choose myself. Obviously, some members of the family are very keen on that kind of thing and have mapped out all sorts. It turns out your Grandmother, I think, was the daughter of an American GI who was stationed here. 
during the Second World, the Second World War, and went back with him to America. His, however, her her mother stayed here. After that, there hasn't been an awful lot of contact with your side of the family. Mm. I'm surprised, uh, Great Aunt Clarice. I don't mean that critically. I don't. Think... You cut out actually, so I don't know what you Sorry. said. What did I get to? I. Uh, You're surprised, Great Aunt Clarice. Um, but I'm surprised, Great Aunt Clarice um, remembered you and. and offered you the estate. I don't say that to... I'm not angry you got it. I hope you'll make something good of it. But, um... What's a surprise? I have the impression that you don't really know much about the family on this side. No, I've been looking through her files and she, um... She has a lot, so it's difficult to sift through. She wasn't family. that well connected to most of the family herself in these latter years. If I... There was something, a figure of legend, as it were, the old lady of the family, standoffish, still powerful in her own way, frankly, quite a frightening woman. Next time there's a family get together, I'll send you an invitation. Oh, I think please. it would be good if you attended. I'd be, uh,. <clears throat> Delighted. <clears throat> it's a smile again. It's not. It's not a cold smile. There's not a lot of warmth there, but it's not. You know, it's not a fake smile either. Not you, know, uh, you might know. You know a lot about the family, and I'm sure about the estate since you had such a vested interest in it. Perhaps when the time is right, we can look into renovating portions of it. Maybe something to talk about, yes. Uh, well, we'll watch with interest to see what you plan to do with the old place. Anyway, I'll get my son in to pick up the painting. And uh, Her son is a man in his sort of young 30s, strapping guy. You know, V-shaped torso, wide shoulders, narrow waist. He looks not quite, you know, a tr sort of handsome enough to be a, a magazine kind of model, but the guy looks pretty um, powerfully built. He's wolf budded as well. And the smell as he comes in. Um, he nods to you in a kind of he's just here to pick painting up for his mum. He's not like playing to he's just in and out. Um and, and she leaves. Um, uh, and as the Lord I shake his hand and like I'm trying to get in good with her, so I'll actually help him move the painting to the car. Oh, oh thank you. He's got quite a posh voice. This guy's obviously been you know, this guy's not the this that part of the family is not lower class than anyway, she's not. Oh. Thanks, old chap. And um, she notes what you're doing. No general reaction, but she's paying attention to it. She's very watchful and observant. You're not quite sure what the power dynamics at work are here, but she's clearly someone who is observing stuff to take judgment of it. They leave. The last few people coming to pick stuff up leave. The table is clear. Everyone's come to pick up everything you have. You don't have the horses. You don't have all the other goods. Marcus, ah, oh, well, a day well done, you know, shakes your hand, and uh, we'll be out. Um, in the next few weeks, we should have the final valuations on the property, and we'll be able to inform you of how much uh, tax remains to be covered inheritance-wise and things like that. And then he makes his excuses and leaves as well, leaving you with a storm still raging outside, pouring down the window. As the last of those others than you uh, finish picking the carcass of the inheritance clean of their own scraps, leaving you with the greater part of the carrion for your own in the form of the estate itself. We will leave it there for today. Um, next session is likely to be what the last or one of the last of the, the thing because next time we're going to have a bit of the last few days before the trophy, the the, meet, the pack meet. We need to have a bit of info gathering, a bit of stuff, but we probably won't get too deep into anything too crazy um, unless it's very short forks coming to see your trophy presentation as it is now you've this this session you have fought with the most dreadful enemy of all bureaucracy um <laughs> realized that there may be this the hidden cost up the sleeve it wasn't a throat tearing thrilling ride this time but it set the ground for some of the things that will be coming and some of the problems you may be having and it's cleared away some of what you needed to do um You've consolidated your wolf-blooded into your territory. Mary is now on board and apparently inc taking an increasing interest in what the hell's going on here, which is good. Rather than going, fuck this, I don't want anything to do with this shit, she seemed to respond instead going, well, if I've been magically bound to you bastards, I'm going to make some something of it, you sods. Um, 
you've kept Jenny on hand with a good the deft move with the would you like to look after the dog? And um and yeah, you know, and you've intimidated the fuck out of um, one of the people you don't like very much with a very skillful set of rolls and a conjured storm just to give him the middle finger. Which is an <laughs> excellent effect. So, aspirations time, folks. So, Let's are hear we, are, so, just real quick, Chris, when we come back, are we like skipping the, like, the rest of this day was just spent dealing with this crap? Um, that yeah, today was the day of dealing okay. with shit in general. So I'm going to just, for argument's sake, uh, or for bureaucracy's sake, I'm going to top off and pull the six essence that I just spent today. Yes, out of the you can, yeah, you can refill fully. I don't expect anything. Nothing else bad will happen that day. So the next time shit kicks off, you'll probably you'll be on yep. full, will be on full essence, and quite likely on full willpower to be honest, given the amount of time that's passing. Yep. So, um, uh, Johnny Galloway aspirations. Uh. Johnny completed his aspiration to establish a territory in performing yep. the, the yep. hunting grounds right, and he mm -hmm. also completed an aspiration in telling Mary what the hell is going on. Yep, okay, yep. and in fact, it's in the aftermath, and ironically, possibly because of the care that Thornbreaker and Stormbringer showed when she was really fucked up, um, she appears to have bought in rather than buying out, if you know what I mean. Yep, okay, and any more aspiration wise or just those two? Um he, I have an aspiration to find out why the family tree was why the estate was left to me. Uh I don't feel like a lot of progress was made towards that until almost the very end with um with the old wolf blooded. I don't know if that'll yeah. count. I, I will give you that. That's um Delilah Gleesham. Yeah, I'll I'll happily give you that. Because it is relevant stuff to it, you know. And some things mm -hmm. took on, like it took a while for, you know, for um, Stormbringers fuck with um, uh, Dunstan thing to come up this time, but it did towards the end. Okay, um, <laughs> Thornbreaker aspirations. Okay, <laughs> my aspirations. My first aspiration was to impress my wolf spirit totem. Um, yep. Second one is to establish a flesh touchstone. Which have have I officially established yep. that at this point? Yes, she is now connected as a flesh touchstone. Okay. And then my third was Earn More Glory, which I actually increased my renown today, so... Yes. Yep. So that's that. But but that is now, yeah, that's all completed. Um, and finally, Stormbringer. Okay, so I know we had talked about kicking Jonathan Dunstan as being... Uh, kicking his ass as being one of my uh, aspirations. Unfortunately, yep. I'm now kicking myself in the ass because I did not take that as one. Uh, however, oh. what, I, what I did take was class... Uh, craft a glass representation of the Unconquered Raven, which I did progress. make progress towards. Um, <clears throat> making it deal with the Storm Spirit. Now, I didn't specifically interact with them, and I, and I think that needs to be modified to just having a positive interactions with Storm Spirits. Um, in the end, I, I, I guess uh, maybe actually the better way of doing that would be uh, crafting a Storm stylized fetish. Would okay. be a, probably a better aspiration for that. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know if, if calling this storm with such an exceptional success involved uh, is going to maybe look put me more in a positive light with storm spirits, that maybe they're more willing to work with me. I'm going to say no, just okay. because you did it for exceptional petty, re but petty reasons, but exceptional reasons, but it was it was on a very different agenda that you were doing that. Yeah. It didn't currently okay. make any progress. So it might be something you could build towards that in the future, but this session I'm going to say no on that. Okay. And then the last one was established territory, which we did successfully do. Okay, so um, everyone is getting one experience, and there are four beats left over. <clears throat> uh, which, what you start with, actually, so you've got you've got fifteen beats this session overall. Um, so not as much of a crazy haul as the hunts were giving you, but still a solid set of beats. So one more XP now. That is going to go, in, I believe, to repaying your XP debt for your glory. Correct. So there's I was... that, that. Yep is sucked up by that immediately. Um, Keith, obviously, Stormbringer, it's an extra point of XP. I don't know how much you've got banked now or what you're thinking of Great. spending it. Right, yep, so something to think about for, for next time is how you want to spend it. Um, and that, I think, is it for today's session, unless there's anything else we want to tackle before the end. No, I'm not hearing anything. So nope, I, think that is, I think that's the end of session seven of, uh, of The Hunt. We're looking at the next session is likely to be the final one, uh, penultimate or ultimate, um, with the meeting of the packs and uh, the showing off of what you, what you did to honour the great aunt or otherwise. And 
presumably completely peaceful, friendly chat between everyone in a very adult <laughs> way with no threats or anything of the sort taking place because you're all reasonable werewolves here and none of you have anger issues. <laughs> so, on that cheerful note, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you, um, uh, anyone. For, if, I don't know if there's anything else in chat for us to tackle before we finish up. Um, uh, if there isn't, then I will. I think we'll bid, bid you all good, goodbye. All right, guys. Thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. We're allowed to talk, right?